Welcome into the Camistry Podcast, episode number 278, baby. Fueled by First Form. Yoink. Get on that First Form app, Patty. Yeah, no shit. No <laughs> shit. Get on that Start app. Start taking some of that level one. I've been doing the protein quite a lot as of late. Oh, Turn I apologize. that off. It's a holiday today. Turn that off, dude. And uh, President's Day. Who's your favorite president? Um, Man, that is a great question. <clears throat> There's a bunch of them. There are. There's a bunch of bad ones, too. And I like some that... Would maybe um, some would look at it as controversial. Uh, a lot of other people would say, "Hell yeah, he was a great president." Ooh. Like a recent president? <laughs> no, like whatever. Yeah, well, I like a lot of. I like Abraham Lincoln. I like the history of Abraham Lincoln. Dude. Good. You know, everybody does. No, I know. Name me another one. And George Washington, obviously. George? No. He's cool. George as shit. Washington. He's was a shit kicker. Dude. Fucking shit kicker, dude. Yeah. He's six foot two. He's got all fake. Was he six two? Yes, and that was gigantic back in the day. Mm-hmm. Fake horse teeth. Mm-hmm. He gathered together just a bunch of farmers, mm-hmm. and they shit kicked the, the Brits, man. Yeah, they did. And and they had to be strategic. They had to do like kind of guerrilla warfare, yeah. not just stand there like I'm going to shoot you. Yeah. No, they had to sneak around the woods and go across the Delaware on Christmas. Let me give you a couple of and, sh- and 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 things like that. George Washington was unbelievable, mm-hmm. and he was intimidating, dude. Big time. I really liked um, Ronald Reagan a lot. Big time, yeah. You know, Reagan was like a president when I was growing up, too, man. He was a Hollywood actor. Hollywood actor. Um, And I liked Barack Obama, man. I thought I thought I thought Barack was cool, man. Now I, you can talk about his foreign policy and all that type of shit, but no, like he he not he killed I, more people with drones than anybody. Yeah, okay. And well, you know how many people yeah, he, he sent back from the Mexican border? Yeah, yeah. millions. No one mm-hmm. even thinks about that. Barack Obama. Everybody's like, "Oh, Trump does all this stuff." Mm-hmm. Barack Obama killed more people yeah. with drones than any other president. Of course, all over the place, fucking dropping bombs all through the the uh, the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, he sent back millions mm-hmm. of fucking. I thought you were gonna illegal. make fun of me for saying that. Well, Barack Obama did divide the country, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. He could have brought everybody together, but he right. brought racism up way more and way more. Yeah. And I think it did divide the country. It created some of that, and Trump and did a pe- lot of that too, man. You know that. And, and, yeah, and people got sick of it, and so that's why they wanted to go with Trump. Mm-hmm. But Teddy Roosevelt, look him up. He's cool, dude. The toughest son of a bitch ever, Teddy Roosevelt. He was a hunter. He would, he would like, think about what we talk about being stuck out in the middle of, you know, the woods when it's mm-hmm. freezing cold and stuff like that. Like, that's the guy you want to be around. John Adams is another one, man. Oh, so tell me about John Adams. John Adams, dude. Holy shit. Dude, he had to do a lot of work, a lot of work to get everything together in that particular time, in the 1700s, mm-hmm. man, to get this nation going. He was a front runner of that, traveling everywhere, doing this, and all the meetings. Yeah. John Adams. John F. Kennedy. Kennedy was cool. He's cool. Although he fucked up a couple of times, Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. JFK was smashing women like you can't believe. Mm-hmm. He was bringing fucking women in. His lovely wife was right there. He would walk past his wife. No. With women. Go into their like secret like swimming pool. Jackie? Oh, yeah, Jackie. Can, yes. And she was awesome. Jackie too. had it going on, dude. Poor, that poor woman went through a lot. And then she's there when he gets fucking his head blown off. Oh like, God, God damn, dude. So it, there's, there's a lot. Why man. did they do that? Why, 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 why were they? There's a lot why, of speculation. Why, why they, uh, uh, there's a lot of speculation. Assassinate him. Maybe the Russians had something to do with it. CIA, people say, have some Jack Ruby. Where'd he come from? All of a sudden, you're going to fucking kill this guy after he, before he goes on trial? Your boy Tucker's taking more wow. heat for the interview. It was not. Tucker? Yeah. I mean. I, I didn't mind it. No, because it was different. Yeah, it was just different. It was like interesting. You know? It was different. No, he but, talked about the. Uh, but I think journalists are like, dude, you kind of like. Oh, really? What are they doing? Which journalists are saying that? Your journalists? Wa- that guy. Who Wall- have they interviewed? Wallace. Who? Wallace. Wallace. You know Wallace. Who? The guy. He was on Fox News, and then I think he moved over Chris to Wallace? Yeah, Chris Wallace. Oh, he was fuck a he was a moderator. He was a moderator fucking for Chris Wallace is a fucking was, remember, joke. Remember moderator for a couple of the presidential yeah. debates. So you're taking his word for no, it? No, like, I'm just. You ask me who. Listen, if he's you're gonna, one of them. If you you he called him a, a puppy dog. No offense, puppy dog. He's the one that went over that. to Russia and sat with a fucking hardcore dude for two two and a half hours. Like, I don't mind that. You know who's a shit kicker? Who? What question should he have asked? I'm sorry. Um, about like killing innocent people. He did. Did he? Yeah. And don't think that doesn't happen over here. You don't be naive. Okay, <laughs> hey, I'm not. Don't be dude. naive. I'm not. Now in Russia, your your fucking private plane is gonna blow up if you try to run a coup well, against yeah, Russia. Yeah. But it's rightfully so. But like people are falling off of buildings. Another guy just passed away in jail. Passed away in jail in Russia too. Who went against 
um, of course, Russia and Putin. Really? Forgot his name, but but uh, he passed away too, which is really sketchy. It's sketchy over there, but it does show that their economies still thriving. Mm-hmm. Russia's economy is thriving, and they are winning that war. But there's a lot of they, poor people in Russia too. Of course, right? there is. Go to Moscow and see how beautiful it is. It's oh, gorgeous. Beautiful city. It's gorgeous. One of the Every, most, even the, one of the most beautiful Europe, transits. It's, it, it, you feel like you're in the most beautiful European city I know. ever. Now you go over to like where fucking Malkin's from and stuff like that, which is all industrial stuff. Would I want to live in Russia? Hell no. Nah. Would I even want to go to Russia? Hell no. But it is interesting to see how the, the way of life in this war is uh, affecting them, and I don't think it's affecting them that bad. But we got rocked with a snowstorm. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't mean to bitch because I know there's so many Canadians out there, which we love, and you guys deal with this every day. But in St. Louis, it's fucked, man. They underestimated a sto- snowstorm last Friday. Oh, Jesus, did they underestimate that. Listen. I remember watching I remember watching local news. I had my radio show. I get there at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm watching the news because I know Andy and I had to do something. And they're like, ah, oh, it's going to be an inch A dusting. A, a dusting. A light dusting. They said a dusting. I know. And I'm like, We're having oh. like a massive ice storm. I've never seen so many car accidents oh. on the road at once. I mean that, man. Yeah. Like driving, it was bad. I had to. I had a bunch of shit to to do that day, even before I even came here. And I'm I'm picking people up and doing this and doing that everywhere I'm going, dude. It's like chaos. One ambulance, fire truck trying to get to a car accident, traffic jams everywhere, people off the road. That's two storms in a row. They underestimated. Usually in Missouri, they overestimate everything. Mm-hmm. They call off schools. Yeah, the nothing opposite. happened. Now they're probably like, well, we need to save money on salt. I remember getting up that morning, going to, going to uh, the station for radio, and I don't see one MoDOT, Missouri of, of Transportation. I do not see one MoDOT salting anything. Mm. And then I leave there. It's chaos, sleet, Are they taking ice. heat? I think so, a little bit. Well, the weather have, people, they, no one, they messed they it up, they too. Didn't, or, I'm sorry, they didn't salt the roads mm-hmm. until the shit was coming down. Mm-hmm. They could have got on that earlier. You know salt's bad for your car, by the way. God awful. So, it's god awful for You know what car. they use in uh, like high elevations, like mountain towns, where they get a shit ton of snow? What's that? Cinder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it better for your car? Yeah, it is. That's fine. Yeah. Is it more expensive? I don't know. That's the, that's the question. You know how much salt you have to spend? On all these roads, yeah. and St. Louis is very spread apart, and there's a ton of highways. And so, is that a, you know, is that a factor? But you got to think too. This, there's two times this year that you needed to salt the roads, mm-hmm. so it's like you only have a little bit left of, of winter. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, don't you know, don't uh, underestimate something when you, sp- especially when you have, you haven't even used your salt. You have a lot piled yeah. up. Put that fucking shit down. Way out by me, it was chaos, man. Mm. Complete chaos. I almost called you because, you know, like, if I if I make a mistake on the air or something like that, you know how I can't sleep for, like, days yeah, and days? Yeah, which is dumb. So, did you hear me fuck up? Yeah. You didn't even say anything to me about it. No. So, you're trying to say something about somebody on the ra- on the Dude, air. so... It I'm, was fine. You're okay. fine. It really That's wasn't that bad when no. you watched it live? No, when you're interviewing... Because I d- what's his interviewed name? Jeff Shen. Yeah. Which, by the way, Braden's like, dude, you got to stop talking to my dad. He's like, I'm like, well, he, he loves it. He, I, I ask him, you're playing against. I go, Braden, if your kids are playing in the NHL one day, playing against Luke's son. Lukey was hitting guys, too. I know he was. I was like, y- you'd want to celebrate that, too. Yeah. So Jeff Shen, Rita Why'd Shen, I'll give them a shot. Because like, he gets it probably like whatever, like, you know, my dad. I love Braden. I know, Braden's I the love best. Both of those and guys. I had Luke on in the postgame show, too. I don't know if you saw that. Yep. It was an awesome interview, man. He was great. You did good. Dude. You did like, good. Um, but Jeff and Rita Shen, I'll give them a shout out, man. What were you trying to say? When Jeff's, you... I, I'll tell you, but Jeff's a shit kicker too. Is he? Luke and uh, Braden's dad. Yeah, he's cool. Firefighter for a long time. Yeah, in Saskatoon, dude. And uh, you can tell they're from Saskatoon. And they're awesome, man. So they're always up for like an in-game interview, man. And obviously, when you pl- when Braden plays against Luke, it's a great storyline. Braden on the pregame, Jeff Shen during the game, Luke on the postgame. So we kind of covered it all. So anyway, so I was in a box, and a, and. It's like the Blues family box, and they were like it was like a birthday party for one of the kids, and uh, so Nathan Walker's daughter was turning four, and her name was. They were like right before I went on, it was like give hey, a shout give out. Give her Winta was her name. I couldn't fucking remember. So what? Winta. <laughs> I couldn't. It's an Australian the beautiful, name. beautiful Australian name. I mean, it's I a could, cute name. But dude, I was like, uh, it didn't sound that bad. You think didn't. I'm gonna fucking text you for that? Do I ever do that? Do I ever text you when you're no, working? No, but like, never. I thought you would have said, no, what the fuck no, happened? W- no, because I'm not a dick. 
I'll chirp you on here, man. But yeah. when you're working, I don't want to rattle you. Yeah. Why would I want to do that? So that rattled me, though. I was like, See, that's the difference I between never, me and him, just yeah. so everybody oh, knows. I'd call, I would call Cam And he would have called me out, and I'm, like, stressed out already. Like, you, you sound like, oh, everybody's <laughs> chirping. Then I'm like, I'm not going to do that to so, you. I'm not going to do that to you. It's one of those situations, though, but I didn't get really chirped on Twitter about it. No, like, you're n- fine. Nobody don't said worry anything. About stupid shit. You like know, that. but I don't like making those type of mistakes. So it's it was good. it was early in the game. I had a lot more shit to do the rest of the game. So I felt like I was able to recover. It's all good. It's a petty thing. If anybody chirps you, that's so a you could tell joke. that I kind of like. No, you're trying to think of the name and you forgot. Who cares? It's petty, dude. Petty. Normally, I just send it. I would never even do it, but it was it's like petty. For one of the players, you think I was going to text you and chirp you about that? I don't do that. Thought you would have said, "Hey, never." Did you? When you did okay? I ever do that? Did you just? I only did compliment you. Just pass you. out on the air. I only compliment you. I'm not going to throw that at you unless you said something really stupid. Yeah, but the interview was fine with Jeff. He was great. Totally cool. Should have just sent good. it back to John Kelly. It's all no shit. Back to you, John. It's all good. Well, that's Cares. what I normally do, but I'm like trying to like hook up the uh, winter. I, speaking of uh, the Blues, I do think um, I'm surprised, and I love Benner. Jordan Bennington, and he's taking a beating right now. I was just listening to the NHL Network, and guys are chirping pretty good because people don't like him. Correct. But he, they, but he, if you know him, he's a fucking awesome guy. Awesome. Dude. I mean, awesome dude. Yeah. And people in St. Louis love him, and they'll fucking die for him. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get a couple games. Again, using the weapon, he knew what he was doing. So anyway, after the uh, Nashville, which is a big game, Blues are playing Nashville. Nashville just gets their ass kicked by Dallas the night before. Matt Duchesne scores a couple goals in that game, I think. Has a good game. Goes out and plays guitar at Tootsie's all night and plays Morgan Wallen music. So he kind of, like, did his thing. Yeah. So Nashville's pissed. They're right behind the Blues, just trying to find a playoff spot, man. Trying to get into the playoffs. And at the end of that game, the Blues are losing. I forgot who was cruising around the net chasing Scandella. Was, uh, who was it? Because uh, he scored on a, on a breakaway earlier in the it? game. And I who was it? Around. Luke Evangelista. Okay. What up, Luke? So, Luke, he's coming around, and Benner just knows he's there and kind of uh, uh, butt put in. a butt in right yeah. into his mouth. Didn't cut him open, but that was deliberate. He and caught I, him. He, and anybody out there who was like, I got some text messages, they were like, he did not do it. Anybody who thinks he did this on purpose, well, like, of course he did it. You purpose. are a naive <laughs> little bitch, if you don't think. I'll, I'll repeat, naive little bitch, if you don't think fucking Benner knew. That he was coming. And you could sense and, everything. And it's Jordan Bennington. He's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. But listen, I, I had a long talk with him before the season, even during the season. He's like been he, good. He, it, this is, it's been calculated that he's been good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he didn't like being chirped, you know, after last season and whatever. Yeah. You know, but if right you were a goaltender so. having that defense in front of you last year, you probably would have snapped too. So he lost his cool on a couple of occasions. Man, he's a fiery guy. Doesn't bother me. People man. celebrate Ron Hextall and Billy Smith and all these guys for playing like that forever. I don't mind it. So you know what? He's played unbelievable this season. He's been one of the best goalies in the league. Probably not even getting enough credit because, you know, of where the Blues are in the standings right now, even though they're in a playoff spot. But they're in a playoff spot primarily because of him. You know what I mean? So he had his one little sl- – it's all good, man. I, if, I, if I'm a teammate of Jordan Bennington, like, he's got to find that happy medium. You don't need him to be the choir boy. But you don't want him losing his cool and, and becoming unglued all the time either. So he's just got to find, hey, listen, they're losing the game. He just, that was his moment. It's all good. As long as he's able to turn the page and then all the, and. and just and, don't get suspended. And don't do that on a regular basis. Don't get suspended. Don't get suspended yeah, like Morgan right. Riley did, exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Just, we need you. Yes. The Leafs need Morgan Riley, although know, they're dominating right now, too. a great story. So I, I talked to Ryan O'Reilly before the game. And then I talked to Barry Trotz. I'll give Trotz a shout out, man. Love him. After the game, we talked for a long time. Awesome, awesome guy. And uh, first year's GM, man, you know, with the uh, Nashville Predators. I'll never forget when he came on the podcast. I just randomly asked him, so Would you, do you ever want to be a GM member? He was yeah. like, maybe. And then all of a sudden, he like became he the general manager. Oh, yeah, of course he, he knew. knew. And I knew, too. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? Um, so for months, the Nashville Predators – who are playing in Vegas in the next game after St. Louis. They had a plan as a team to go out to Vegas after after the St. Louis game. It was an afternoon game against St. Louis. They were going to get out there early. They had it all lined up, Cam. The U2 tickets in the sphere. They were doing all this shit. So they get thumped 9-2 yeah. to two by the Dallas Stars. Trotz cancels the Vegas trip, dude. There you go. Or at least, you know. Getting out there Fuck and you. all the festivities. Fuck you. And he's like, hey, you guys want to have all the fucking do it. glitz and glamour and all this other stuff? 
Well, you got to take care of what you need to take care of on the ice. Even though they've got veteran guys who are grown men, who are established, who okay. are winners, guys like O'Reilly, guys like Luke Shen. I love Philip Forsberg, man. Yes, I obviously love Roman Yossi. Yep. You know, UC Soros has been around cool. for a long time. Damn good goal. So, you know, they've got a lot of pieces there, but he's establishing his ground, man. And, good. And I looked at it a couple different ways. I'm curious your take. Was that the right move? Or... If you're Andrew Burnett, do you call in the leadership team prior to the game against St. Louis and be like, listen, they want to pull this trip off the table. You guys better come out and bust your fucking ass today. If you don't, we're not going to Vegas after the game. We're going back to Nashville and we're practicing. And the GM's serious about this. So how you guys want to handle it? Or do you think it was the right move just to pull the plug, man? I mean, grown men, they want to have a party and do their thing. I'm just curious your take on it. That's going to set you back. It's going to set you back if you go party in Vegas. You better fucking deserve it. Yeah. That's my opinion. Okay. You better deserve it. Because I was wondering going into the game. You are a fringe playoff team. You need to get in. I was wondering going into the game how Nashville was going to respond. Were they going to be pissed off and be like, like was that going to give them they, they, motivation to put forth a better effort? Or was it going to take that away? Because, like, what's the motivation? We already have to go back to Nashville. We can't even go to Vegas now. Now we got to go back to Nashville. What's the motivation? Motivations getting to make the playoffs. Yes, man. that's the motivation. Yeah, they, they you want to be in a spotlight. You make. They the got playoffs. off to a rough start. Yeah, and then they just got red hot, and that's why they're in the position they're in right now because they had that run, and uh, they're only a couple points out of a playoff spot, man. But they got a good team. I'm all for partying. You know, I'm yeah. a party guy, yeah. dude. Like yeah. I would have been fucking. But you can't be losing too. nine to two can't at home. Lo- at home with the guy on. Listen, here, here's why. See, I just wonder, like, if you're Barry Trotz, man. You made the decision to uh, to buy out Matt Duchesne, right? You're trying to clean up the whatever. It's like addition whatever by subtraction. Yeah. So whatever was going on inside that room, I'm not going to sit here and say Duchesne was a bad guy. He's doing his thing with Dallas right now and been around for a long time. But they bought him out, man. He's a good player, and they bought him out. He had a great season the year before. They got rid of Johansson. And this guy comes to Nashville – Beats your team after being bought out nine to two. Scores a couple of goals and then goes and puts on a show at Tootsie's across the street. Playing Morgan Wallen after he's been bought out. It's pretty cool. And shoves it, a, shoves it up Nashville's ass. Yeah. Like you're gonna buy me out. I'm gonna score and then put a concert on a concert in your on. town. In your town. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool to do. If, if you have that ability to score two goals in the NHL and then go put on a concert at Tootsie's, you're, you're pretty cool. You're man. pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give you that. 100%. Yeah. I don't know if he's a good team or not. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I'm but. not gonna. We shouldn't say that he's not. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna give another shout out. Yeah. Now people chirp us for the shout outs because they t- say we need a. I don't know what the fuck they say. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna give a shout out. PK Subban. Remember I told you guys like during the Stanley Cup run, Lou and uh, Pete DeBoer would have me come down and do the, the read the lineup, read the lineup, and put on a skit, which was like the you, most. You liked how he did that. The most hardcore thing possible to do. Like, I'd rather play in the game and get put on a spot against the top line than go down there and try to perform when everybody has their towel over their head and they're all so fucking focused on the game. And mm-hmm. I got to go, like, be a comedian. Right. That was difficult When you're for me. on the team, yeah. When I'm on the team. That was, that was a, when P.K. Subban went in there, I'm like, I'm ro- literally rolling my eyes. Like, oh, boy, what's he going to do? He was fantastic. He was kind of funny. And I like Subban. Nobody was really laughing, though. No, but he did a good job, dude. He did. He did me and Kate were watching him. Kate's like, He's doing pretty fucking good. Yeah. I, I was I was waiting for him to be just kind of cringy, mm-hmm. but he wasn't at all. Yeah. I like PK now, man. I like his style. He's got his glasses on. He's loud. Like, he just looks cool. I mean, mess is mess. Mm-hmm. But PK, like, you need that. The NHL needs that. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this. Last weekend was a fucking great weekend for hockey. Mm-hmm. That Saturday was awesome, yeah. dude. All those games starting at, like, 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. And you had the two outdoor games were cool, mm-hmm. man. Um, good games, really good games. Wow! Do you know. see the fight off the bat with that young kid, that six foot seven kid, he and trolls Matt Martin. around, no bucket on. He's got his stocking cap on, literally trolling around for like a minute in mm-hmm. front of eighty thousand people, or whatever it is. Yeah. Then this first NHL game, he's there. His first NHL shift, he goes and fights Matt Martin and beats him up, and beats him up. That he, beat him up didn't kill him. Martin could have really at the end of the fight, he he could have punched him right Fine, in the face, but and he didn't. Take me on the inside though here because. I got to give Matt Martin credit for taking the fight, too, giving it to him Six also. foot seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Matt Martin doesn't have to fight that kid. Yeah, he knows it's his first game. 
and he should want to fight. I mean, Matt Martin, hey, listen, get the crowd going. Hell yeah. You're you're playing in front of, you know, how many people were there, you know? 80,000, right? Something like that, whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, hey, well, put, go put on a show, man. Put on a show. But he gave him the fight. He gave him the fight. So I'll give him credit for doing that. Matt Martin's cool. Matt Martin's really cool, Really man. cool. Handsome. Always like too. Matt Martin. I liked him a lot. Respected him Although when he played against Although he chirped Brian Miller's brother, Drew, for having the gray hair. So <laughs> what? He's got gray <laughs> they hair. They show that all the I time. I mean, like, you don't think I get chirped if I had a fucking ball? Of course. That's the way it is. He's like, like what? Minors? Of... You were the minors longer than me. Remember, you know, remember that yeah. clip? You know, it was right on the bench. Funny, I remember. He was on yeah. the bench chirping him. Yeah, that's fine. Biz is going after Lou hardcore. Mm-hmm. Lou Lamarillo. Yeah. Because all these stadium series, man, I loved how... Rocky Balboa, the Philadelphia Flyers come out. They that's got cool. all the Rocky that's gear. Cool. The and Jersey then, Shore, And Jersey man. comes. That's fucking Sopranos, baby. Gabagool. Yeah. I loved it. Now, the nerds are like, I, that's disrespectful. Man, 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 man. Like, shut the fuck up. Wait, 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 cool. wait, wait. What do you mean? So the- What uh, nerds? The nerds on, on Twitter and whatnot. They're upset about what? About the Devils um, and how they kind of like- um, I guess praised the mob oh. mentality. With shut the fuck. I up, thought it was you Jersey weirdo. Shore, honestly. No, it's Sony, Tony Soprano. Soprano. Okay. Come on, the jumpsuit. So the first team to do this was St. Louis. I, I I thought it was cool when St. Louis did it because the temperature was like minus ten and degrees, they, yeah. and they wore like you know like they were go- swimsuits, like they were going to the beach. Yeah, that was cool. So that was creative, you yeah. know. So everyone's trying to become. Creative. I think some teams have like failed at it, you know. But I thought these guys did a pretty good job, man. Job. Rocky, Philly, Jersey Shore, whatever. Sopranos, man. I like it. But the New York but, Islanders. But then the man. Islanders, Lou probably put the kibosh on mm-hmm. being different. And I think that's. And I love Lou, and everybody knows that. But I think, not to mention, they're getting the All Star game next year. Like Lou, are we going to be creative at all? Mm-hmm. Are you going to put your foot down? It's a on league every, event, though. Is he okay? But is well. He's still got his hands and everything. Is he going to micromanage that? You got to you got to think of the bigger picture, man. It's a league event, though. All right. Has I'm Jersey saying. ever had the All Star Game? Jersey, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he's been involved with like league events in the past. Maybe, I, I, and he I, I don't know if he, you know, what could he really do to, you know, make a negative impact on the All Star Game? Do you know who we're talking about? Lou Lamar. I'm just asking. He like, could do a lot. No, of but what would he do? Like what you saw this year? Like would he not allow like Justin Bieber to be on the bench? I don't or something? know. Like I don't know, I don't like know. That, that's a league that he's not going to have a say over that. But I hear what okay. you're saying, dude. And <laughs> this is this has always been Lou. Like we shouldn't it's even him. be surprised. Yeah. But he's never. And I mean, you obviously know as well as anybody, man. And anybody who played for him, like this is just the it's way it goes. Is. So I don't think, I don't get the impression, Cam. The players are like upset about it. They just know they, look they cla- play for Lou, dude. They like, play for Lou. And look, you know? you're with the fire and the police walking out. That's all I care about cool, too. Man. You're hanging out with the guys. Yeah. That's cool. I don't think you have to dress up either. You know what I'm saying? No, but it, but it, but the kids see it, dude. It, it it's a greater listen. NHL is a bunch of dude. The NHL is like the little brother of mm-hmm. the big four. Let's be honest here. They're the little the brother. Little, They're little like the, brother. How, what do I do? Do I go? They're like I want to be just I wanna, like I you, be them, but I can't. Like they need to. Fi- <laughs> they need to figure out as much as they can to, to bring attention to young kids and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so, like little things like that, they add up, and they're petty. It's petty. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't cost you anything. No, I know. It doesn't do anything. So just like the little things it's, you have to do. I remember hearing stories years ago. Like I don't think like Jersey play. I, uh, early two thousands. Players were like, uh, at least in warmups, would like play with these like pink sticks, were wrapped in like breast cancer awareness and type stuff, and like he wouldn't let his no. players do stuff like Buttoned that. Up, baby. You know what I mean? Jersey untucked. And you know, I heard about uh, you know different stick reps and stuff like that. They sometimes had an issue going into exactly. like Jersey and stuff. You know, just in terms of, you know, you look at them like in most rinks. I mean, they're hanging out almost inside the dressing room. You know what I mean? And inside the uh, equipment room, like it's a little more of a challenge when you went into Jersey or Toronto or New York now with the Islanders with Lou running the show. But I, that's what I love about him. At the same time, it's like you know, know. Those, those guys are dressing like the Sopranos. Man, he 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 is like one of the Sopranos. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, the Sopranos asked asked Lou. Whenever this was all going down in two thousand, two thousand one, two three, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever, the Sopranos, the producer or whatever got a hold to of be Lou in the show to be on the show and to be at the bada bing which is a strip club and lou goes hell no lou wanted nothing to do with it but they wanted him to be a part of the sopranos mm-hmm. and he would say no and that's just how he is yeah but i, I respect when i was in pittsburgh doing color with kerber and i remember seeing different teams and i watched the blues walk out and they're dressed nice but i'm sitting there in a the hotel 
and I look over, that's when I avoided Lou mm -hmm. because I had a chew in my mouth yeah, and I was yeah, just in a yeah. weird spot. Right. Very embarrassing. These guys walked in, mm -hmm. the New York Islanders, they looked as classy as you could possibly really? get in Andy. They looked classy as shit, buttoned up. Like arriving to the hotel? Arriving to the hotel. I saw that the way they presented themselves. I'm like, yep, mm -hmm. they look different. They look fucking bi all business. Let's go. Shaved up. Everything's fucking nice. Ties all the way up. Not hanging down. Yeah. Nothing like that. Yeah. And I noticed that. And I'm like, oh, oh, it's the Islanders. Like, oh, shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. It did us all look good, dude. You think, so, you think that's necessary in, like... Is that almost taking it too? I always wondered, like, when I'm on a team plane or whatever, and how they have to wear suits getting onto the plane or whatever. Now you can wear like a golf shirt or something like that, but a sport coat, you know. Now they and then they change for the flight, and then you put your shit and then back they put on. their shit back on. Here's the bitch. Like two hours later. Fuck that. No, that you're in the NHL. Dress nice. Mm -hmm. You're in the NHL. You dress nice. Yeah. But in American League, when you're going from on the bus. shitville to fuckville. And there's salad dressing on the floor, and you got your you got your suit on. Mm -hmm. No one is looking at you. It smells like shit. Smells like dog fuck, and there's trash everywhere. And I gotta take my fucking suit and put it on, and walk off everywhere. Give us track suits yeah. in American League. That's that's where I would complain. You're in the NHL. Those planes are gigantic. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own fucking seat. No, you wear a suit and tie, yeah. or you wear a suit and you look classy. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. Because yeah. it does. I noticed it. When the Islanders walked in, I'm like, they look fucking good. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Yeah. I mean, That's listen, all. I hear you. I <clears throat> Chirping Lou is, it, is, it, it, just, it is what it is. I mean, like, I don't know. I, this is all over him. It's so funny. Is he? We love him, but he's all over Lou. I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> is he and really? it's like, Lou's not seeing that. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, and yeah. let me explain why. Mm -hmm. When you go up to Lou's office, when you go up to his office in the morning, which I've been there plenty of times, his desk has... Every clip. Paper after paper after paper. Every single clip you could possibly imagine. He goes through everything. He knows exactly what's going on with everything. Like, he's on the ball. So don't think that he's not on social media. Remember when I was spitting chicklets for the mm -hmm. first time? Oh, yeah. And I told the story about... You got a phone call. Phone call. He called me the next day. The next day. He didn't day. like how you told the story. He didn't like how I told the story. You embellished. No. The story's true. I said that he cussed at me. Yeah. Which he did. He did. But... He, he didn't, didn't like that. that. So now you that, just told the story again. You no, did I'm it just twice saying, now. Well, I'm just saying. You're going to get another phone call. No, no, no. I, well, no, he'll be calling you tomorrow. But it's all good. He didn't cuss like I'm some, like he denounced. He was just pissed. Lou, I'll handle this. He, no, you were pissed. No, I'm going to handle it. No, no, it. Lou, you are pissed I, no, at me. No, I'm going to handle it's it. It's my fault. It's my fault. Let me handle it. My fault. But he, I got it. Andy, he knew yeah, right away. I got you. Um, all right, we got to talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> Do we have to? But I feel like. I know. They're, oh, we never, they're we, gonna be in a winter we, classic. We, we, now we now have a reason to talk about it. The no, they're not. It's not the winter classic. Oh, it's a stadium. The Blues series. are in the winter classic. You're in right. Chicago. That's right. We're gonna go to it's it. It's like March fifth or something. So they got the stadium series. March My bad. 1st. You're right. You're right. Yeah. On that. March. 1st. What am I thinking? Yeah. The Blues are in a goddamn. Yeah, they're not thing. putting Columbus in the winter classic. Yeah. <laughs> the stadium series. That's fine. Hey. I don't even get, I don't ever get caught up in the stadium series like the pretty cool this weekend leading up to it like it, yeah. I don't it doesn't do anything for me yeah but then you watch the games and you see like the park setting outside awesome. the rink and somebody's walking their dog dude the entire game like walking around the rink like the they're Central in a park, park theme, right? yeah it was cool yes you know I thought that was really creative the stadium's awesome yeah it is. It looked like the New York Giants or New awesome. York Jets. You know what I'm saying? Like in terms of when they showed the crowd, you're like, oh yeah, that's where the. It looked like and an NFL stadium. They had two stadium. games in one day. Loved it. Two days. Or two, uh, two, two, ga uh, two back games. Back to back. Back to back. That was awesome. Yeah. Same venue, different crowd. And I think that's something cool that's to totally do too. Cool. You know, obviously it makes sense uh, with the proximity of all those teams in that location, but I love it. Can't do it everywhere. And I'll I'll bring up another guy who I play with. Who? Yogs. Dude, I know. I want to talk about Columbus. Dude. Okay. Oh my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. We're going to get the Yogs. All right, cool. Who's like the fucking coolest? He's a person. fucking pimp. <laughs> okay. Did you see so his comments? <laughs> okay. Go with Columbus <laughs> you see what before he said I. about his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. He is the <laughs> She's fucking. He's too young to remember him playing in Pittsburgh. He's a fucking. One of the greatest man. lines ever. We'll talk about Yagi. Yagi here in just a minute. My boy. Um, Columbus. Columbus. Okay, so. <sighs> Full disclosure, Yarmo Kekalainen, love Yarmo. So do I. He was a big help for me when I was young, coming up in the business. 
Yep. I pumped his tires like no other. Great to meet too. Yep. And uh, remain friends with him to this day. Exchange some text messages and stuff, man. Like, and you know what? He's he's not a guy that's like he understands. Like he can't just, you know, he's not like a, um, like if Doug Armstrong were to get fired or something like that, where like, you know, he knows he's going to get a job as soon as he wants to get a job. You know, Yarmo's in a situation where he's got to stay visible. He's got to be working, be out there. I get that. Make sure you're careful what you say publicly. Yeah. Don't say anything that's going to like you know, jam you know, you jam you up. Um, and he wouldn't do that anyway. He's a pretty classy, dude. Like actually. him a lot. But, you know, this guy's already, like, scouting, like, an American League game, a, a Cleveland, you know, an American League game, you know. And, and listen, Craig Berube, same way, man. Same he knows game. he's going to get a job, but, like, whatever. These guys. He's doing work. They're getting paid still, and they're not just going to, like, sulk and, like, be no. like, I can't believe they did this to me. No. You know? It's like, listen, you had an 11-year run in Columbus. You didn't get to where you wanted to go. People are like, well, why are they doing it now? How come they didn't do it before? I don't completely disagree. You had an 11-game or 9-game losing streak this season, something like that. You had the whole Babcock debacle, which he took all the heat for. He but people who know, know that he didn't make this decision on his own. There's no way in hell that he would. If you think that Yarmo Kekalainen just went out and hired Mike Babcock and just went to the Columbus Blue Jackets yeah. and said, I want to hire Babs. Yeah. And everybody else was like, what? This makes no sense. No, it didn't work like that. This was a collaborative, collective decision inside the organization, yet he's the only one taking any heat for it, which makes no sense. So you had the long losing streak. They didn't fire him then. They didn't fire him after Bob's, our Babs. You had the, the, the break here, which maybe people felt like would have made sense. I thought John Davidson gave the, uh, an honest answer and said, listen, I just had a uh, back surgery. I wasn't around the team. I couldn't fire him, essentially. Like, I needed him to be around the team. But – there's no sense of keeping him around now to have him make the decisions that are, you know, could potentially impact the organization moving forward the next few years with the trade deadline around the corner. I'm looking at Columbus Cam and I'm saying, okay, you know, who are they now versus when he got there? And listen, they had some real good players. People forget they had Panarin there. Yeah, they you know? Did. I mean Bobrovsky. they had uh, Bobrovsky, yeah. you know, who won, you know, Besna uh trophies while he Beat was Tampa in Tampa Bay. Uh Columbus. You know, they had Cam Atkinson, mm -hmm. they had Seth Jones, yes. you know, they had uh, Nick Foligno. I, they had a bunch of dudes. They did. You know what I mean? And they had some, you know, real good veterans. And, um, you know, the Pierre-Luc Dubois, I think that's the one move where you say, man, did they accelerate that decision too quick? Remember he, like, quit on Columbus? Mm -hmm. He was, like, his sh dog in his shifts on purpose. They should have just sat his ass out. Oh, God. Or you dog your you know, shifts. They should have just sat his ass out instead of, like, okay, we're going to do what you want right off the bat. They made a trade. They bring Patrick Laine. It, it, it just was not. I know. You had a Pierre-Luc Dubois. When they beat Toronto in the bubble, like he was like one of the best players in the league at that time. Like He was a hot commodity. So I feel like they maybe could have done, if they took their time, maybe got more in return to truly set up the organization moving forward versus Patrick Laine, who I know had scored a bunch of goals, but everyone knew Laine's reputation yeah. before he came to Columbus. It shouldn't be a surprise. He is what he is. Yeah. And he's going through some personal stuff right now, so we hope he's doing good, man. Can we talk you know? about that for a second? We'll talk about that. Did dude. you see that what, fucking those kid? podcast guys? Yeah, and this, these I did didn't know what that meant, by the way. A Remington? Yeah, Remington. What do you mean? I, well, I had to look you it up. You know what a Remington is? Now I do. It's, is it like a military how, or something? What? No, what a Remington it? rifle, dude. Yeah. So when the Native Americans were shit kicking us for three hundred mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. the Remington, once that came out, mm -hmm. where you like, bam, bam, like that. It's called a Remington retirement. Yeah, meaning you're gonna kill yourself. Oh God! You didn't pick that up? No, I didn't know that. That's, that's what god it meant. awful. That's that is god awful. And like that's like and I'm Patrick crazy. Patrick Liney responded on Patrick Liney tweeted back, tweeted back out. So those guys should be like they should never be no, allowed. They could, no, to... he fucked up. Listen. Okay, well they should come out. The girl on there actually came out and said, "Hey, I didn't laugh at it. I didn't know it's what a, they were saying." It's a dinky podcast. Yeah, I know. No one knows know. who they are. Know, they didn't play. They're not in. And they're not hired by a team like no, you. No. But the guy, the kid fucked up, and it's bad. And Lion A called him out, and that's fair. And he's taking his Did criticism. Did he apologize? I don't know. But if he does apologize, you got. I would take his word for it. I'm like, I fucked up. I was trying to be funny. The shit that I say on here sometimes, I'm not going to go that deep with suicide. Like, I, I had that in my family. My mom's dad killed himself, and she walked in on him, mm. hanging from the fucking basement of the... Oh, of the, my uh, God, of, dude. Yeah, and when she was 13 years old. Oh, my God. So that fucked her up. So I, I get that part. Um, but I, if he apologizes, you got to let it go, in my opinion. 
Like he fucked up. He was trying to be funny. Trying to be funny. He's trying to be. He's not being serious, he's, right? No, you would he's think. just trying to be a goofball. I, like, like, I get that, but it was not what? good. That's stupid. It was distasteful to even say that. Is so dumb. dumb. A Remington. So that he deserves all. all the heat he's getting, dude. I know, but I would yeah. always say. Yeah, I get it. it, it like you know, like, he probably I, feels like shit. He's probably getting, he's probably never had any he, attention like this. He and probably now it's lives all with negative. his parents. He probably has no Seth? fucking money. Is his name Seth? I know. Think about it though. Well, he's not killing animals, but he's probably living with his parents. He probably makes you no money. He loves hockey, and he, he loves fought, the Blue Jackets. He loves the Blue Jackets. They he's never one win. Of the, he's, they never win. He's one of their five fans that they have. <laughs> well, apparently, they have a lot though. Oh, do they? And so <laughs> he fucked up, and so I say, kind of let it go at this point. Yeah. In my okay. opinion, okay, I'm glad but he I'm, got he got rocked okay. for it. So talk to him. I would right now. Hey, dude, you gotta watch that kind of shit. And I'm hardcore as fuck. I say crazy yeah, shit all just the time. Don't say that. Yeah, that when it comes to suicide, when he's already taking a leave of absence, when he when it comes to for, suicide, for mental. Yeah, you, know, you don't know what he's doing. You don't, you don't know, know where he's, he's at mentally. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I saw that. And I'm like, dang, d dog. Yeah. But then he the he this kid's getting fucking rocked, and he he's not like some big time guy that's got a bunch of money that he's like, oh fuck her. He's probably like, oh my god, I'll never have a job ever again. No, and, and he, so he might not. Well, not not in not hockey. A, he could probably work at Schnucks. Oh yeah, or he could work that's at the a gas, grocery store. For he worked the gas station where I just got ripped off at. Mm-hmm. Well, he can do a lot of things. I just got ripped off at a gas station. What do you mean? They they robbed you? Man, I am such a pussy at times. Mm-hmm. I buy a bu- I buy my beer. I got my chew. And this woman charged me like 40 bucks. Oh, my God. For your beer and your chew? And I go, oh, and there's people behind me. And, and they you just know, paid it? And they know who I am. And I'm like, uh, And I'm like, 40, 40 bucks for four beer and a tin of chew? She's like, oh, I messed that up. Okay, 32 bucks. And I'm like, okay, here you go. Okay, I'm out of here. And I got in my car. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I should have just, I, now I feel like, blah, not that it's okay, like, we're mm-hmm. fine. Like, don't feel sorry for me or Andy when it comes to that kind of stuff, but. Cam, write, got, Cam writes off his beer and chew anyway. I just anyway. fucking got ripped off work. by this girl. I had no idea what she's doing, but there's people behind me. I'm like, fuck, it just, it puts a. Damn, a, dude. I know. You got fucking. I got ripped off by $20. Yes, you did. I don't know. It ain't that's, that big of a deal. That's what they, they would never do that to me. If I walked yes, in there, they would. no, no they well, Andy counts his pennies, so no, it wouldn't. <laughs> they I wouldn't, just let it go because people behind me, me knew who we were, and I was like, yeah. oh, fuck. So me. getting back to Columbus, um, they made the playoffs, I think, th- three or four years in a row or something like that, five times total under Yarmo. <clears throat> Columbus is just one of those teams, man. It's kind of like Arizona and Buffalo. They, no matter what they do, they just can't ever Arizona's get over the hump. World. Sorry, Columbus is Columbus close. has a rink. That's about it. Over them. About it. Over them. That is a big time. They've got deal. steady ownership who spends to the cap every year. Yeah. And they've got a rink. They got a rink outside in a nice of, town. Outside of that, what is the difference? It doesn't matter. They're still better than Arizona. Yeah, right? Arizona's a nice town. I know. You said in Arizona's a, nice a town. state. I'd rather be. I'd rather live in Arizona than Columbus. Oh, and play in front of four thousand people. No, no. I'm fucking saying way. Well, when you get in a rink, I'm not talking about. That. I'm saying just in terms of if I, if I owned a business. And he said, "You can, you can live in Columbus, or you can live in no and, shit." And, and, and Col- listen, living. I live in St. Louis, man, so I ain't chirping Columbus. Okay? No, you Columbus know, is nice, I, dude. Columbus it's got less crime. And, than and I've been to St. Columbus. Louis. I spent ten days there, actually covering nice. the um, the World Cup of Hockey, USA's Yoink. training camp back in two thousand four. Man, had a great time. Would go to this bar every single night. It's nice. I'd see Chelios and Holly and Kachuk and Madonna and Scotty Young and Dougie Wait, and dude. So what are you saying? And and I so I knew all those guys because a lot of them had St. Louis connection. They'd pay for my beer all night long. Or whatever. Well, my, my point, awesome. So what are so you trying to say? What I'm saying is I'm not going to chirp Columbus. No, I don't, Columbus so is I've, a nice I've town. I've been there. It's it's a great. It's a college town. Ohio State. Their team's college. not good, but the city's but the great. The team. The rink's nice. I know. The area's I know. nice. Okay. Arizona is a joke. It's a Just joke. The team is a joke. The fucking whole organization's a joke. The setup's a joke. The organization. They're fucking. You're in a, you're in the uh, the visiting locker room. You're sitting on steel chairs and fucking coolers. Yeah, no, it's fucking it's awful. It's a joke. It's awful. These guys work their entire life. I've said it Don't several times. Don't even lump Columbus in with Arizona. Arizona. Well, they are what Arizona. Are they're owner. They're they're Arizona with an owner. Arizona with a rink. Well, that's part of it. Well, that's a big part. I'm just saying. Do you imagine? Do you imagine the Blues playing a centine? Do you imagine the Blues playing a centine? Think about that. That would be the biggest laughing stock you could possibly imagine. 
Arizona's a fucking hey, joke. I was talking. Uh, Centene's getting like an NCAA regional coming. I don't even know Dude, if it's big enough win, for that. They man. got a bunch they, of shit going. Heck, they got, like according to like the pairwise, which Big Walt was telling me what the pairwise was. What's that mean? What do you mean pairwise? It's kind of like how they What's that mean? the projections of who's going to play where and who's going to be what seed. You know, they do yeah. that in like NCAA basketball tournament. Yeah. So with his Boston accent, he said pairwise like twenty. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> He's like, according to the part why or whatever the fuck, you know, like in his fucking post. <laughs> I'm like, the what? And he's like, the part why. I'm like, <laughs> dude, yeah, I don't know what the a, fuck you're saying. It just doesn't matter. The pair wise. Um, I tell you what, Matthew. He was telling me it was uh, right now it's Wisconsin and Michigan State. Well, I'm out at Centene Community Ice Center. I'm like, dude, those two schools are going to fucking bring a ton of people. Oh, God, yeah. They need to be playing like downtown or I know. something. You know what I mean? Centene's so nice, dude. We got so the best nice. fucking rink going. So and get, Matthew your, get your tickets for that. Matthew could chuck dominating, too, by the way. Give you a little shout oh, out. Oh, yeah. I put it out on Twitter yesterday, man. Since Jesus. January 1st, he's leading the league in scoring. This guy's putting up like two, three, four points a night, dude. Dude, I'm sorry, but. Now he's like, I think he's gotten himself back into the top 15 in scoring in the league. I, look, you have to look at goal differential. Mm hmm. Even like with the Blues right now, they're like, the only team in the playoffs that are a minus goal differential. The Blues that are in a playoff spot. I was gonna spot. say, while not Pitts, fucking while Florida. Pittsburgh, I believe, is the only team outside of the playoffs Sorry. that is actually Fuck plus Pittsburgh. on the goal differential. They fucked up yesterday. Did you watch that game? Oh, they lost Pitt the game. Oh my I know god! They did. And Yager, can okay, we get into Yager? Well, hold on. Let's finish Columbus real quick. Oh Jesus! Let's wrap this up with Columbus. Um, they're so, they're irrelevant. So what are they gonna do? Like, is it time to like? Mm. I'm sick of all the talk. They, no, no one talks more than like Columbus right now. It's like I understand you got players coming. Every organization has good players in the pipe. At least yeah, most, yeah. most, especially when you're bad. Most you should. Do. And if you're terrible every year, and you yeah. miss the playoffs, and you're picking in the top five, top ten. I would they hope turn it around. I would hope you've guys. got some prospects coming. Yeah, and they listen. They could turn the it around. The Dubois trade, you know, I think derailed them a little bit. But they've also made some terrible decisions. The coach they hired before Babcock was fucking bad. Yeah, he wasn't good either. Who was um, that? What's his name? Uh, I remember. I remember. Yeah, who was the kid they got. They got the, uh, the coach they got from uh, junior. You know, they yeah. brought up. He, he was no good. Uh, but how do you know the guy that they have now? You know, I don't know if he's any good either. But they didn't hire him as the head coach. But they yeah. just threw him in there in the head coaching role. Maybe some Babcock, players. But they went out and they hired Mike Babcock, which. Proved to be the worst hire and and most bizarre hire in the history of hockey. It was so unnecessary. You didn't need to do that. So I know they've got some pieces coming, but they should have pieces coming. You miss the playoffs every year, You're so terrible. you got to have pieces coming. That's the way it works. It's more impressive that the Blues make the playoffs all the time, and they've got a they bunch got, of pieces they got coming. More, I dude. know. If, they, if you look at the list, <laughs> you know, or the, the Blues teams are that do top. make the playoffs, yeah. and they've got good pieces who consistently draft, you know, a prospects in the twenties. Who would you rather play for? St. Louis or Columbus? No, 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 no. Calgary or Columbus? Probably Columbus for family reasons. I know. And taxes, maybe. And a lot of things. And the building. I know. So, um, I mean, that's a – I don't know. But Calgary would be cool, too, man. I'd love to play in a Canadian city. Calgary's a beautiful city. I would love to play in the NHL in a Canadian city. I think it'd so be you get a little bit older. I think it'd be a you great. Want to go hide. I know, but I think that you would know. be a great experience. You want to really experience what it's like being an NHL player playing in a Canadian city. Playing in Canadian, yeah. No like doubt. I don't think the Columbus players have really. They don't have that experience, man. Arizona, they don't have that experience. No, not at all. Buffalo does to a lesser extent because it's Buffalo and there's no passion about hockey up there, and you're close to the Canadian border, but. Every year, man, every offseason, it's like, wow, watch out for Columbus this year. Watch out for Buffalo Who says this year. That? Watch out for uh, Arizona. The Buffalo I yeah. get. Buffalo I Jersey, get. Jersey, same thing. Yeah, I know, Jersey too. Although you know. their jerseys the other day oh, they were, were sick. sick. I love those. Fucking sick tough, I liked dude. all of them, really. The, I know, except for the Islanders. Still, the Islanders. The color concept, though, was cool, though. The man. Islanders looked like Philly. If you looked at it from afar, like mm -hmm. it looked like a Philly. It was blue and orange, though. Yeah, but it looked dark, so yeah. it looked like a Philly. Uh, yeah, it it looked cool. like Philly. I didn't like the, the stickers Devils. on the side of the house. I like the Devils one, though. It looked the Devils awesome. one looked cool. The NYR did not like on the Rangers. The Devils look sick. The Rangers dude. has sick jerseys. They had that big come from behind. I'm looking at gold differential. And that, and that's meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. Like Dallas is plus forty. The Blues are minus. What a 30. terrible loss by the Islanders, by the way. Terrible. Patrick Wall must he have was lost unhappy. his fucking mind. Dude, he and settled down. And that weird goal at the end too, where uh, yeah, the uh, uh, 
uh, Panarin, wasn't it? Panarin fucking and then the goal, Dobson. Dobson the goal just comes tries, off. tries to get over there. But the if, if he would have just stopped the puck there and it didn't cross the goal line, even if he knocked the net mm-hmm. over, maybe they got what they get a penalty well, if it shot. It doesn't cross the goal line, yeah. It's yeah, not, but they might have got a penalty hey, shot. Can I bring for knocking this up over? about penalty shots? Yeah. The NHL needs to establish a rule where you have the option to decline a penalty shot. Yeah, it happened the other and day. And accept a two minute minor. Give a team an option. Now, if you want to introduce it slowly, maybe you just do it when a team is already on a power play. Do you want the five on three for like however much time is left on the original minor? Or do you want the penalty shot when you're already on the power play? Like if I'm a team right now, a penalty shot, listen, it, it is what it is. It's not automatic, we all know. I mean, it's hard to not accept a penalty yeah, a shot. Play. It's a pretty nice op- – but if you're already on a power play – would you rather have a five on three? Are your are your percentage, are your chances of scoring any better on a five on three versus a penalty Depends shot? On who's shooting? And probably not, I mean, you look at the Blues historically over the course of the last five years, they don't score a whole lot in five on three. They haven't been very good at it. They just got their first five on three power play Cotton, goal right. the other day. Um, so I think they were zero for five or zero for six up to that point. But I just would like to see the team have this opportunity. I actually asked uh, Barry Trotz about this after the game. And because he felt like the game changed and the game turned when Nashville stopped Jake Neighbors on the power play. Yeah. When they or made the that shot. save on the penalty shot. Sorry. When they made the save. I saw that. Then the game changed when uh, their goaltender made the save on the penalty he shot. scored there, too. Well, and I talked to Jake about that yesterday. He just shot right his pads. He missed the 5 I know. I took Ty down to practice yesterday. I love Jake and Neighbors. fucking guys are awesome. Are they right? good to him? Oh, my God. They, I hope so. Pavel Buchnevich. He's good. passing pucks with them. I like to hear Jake that. Jake Neighbors. Ho for bringing them pucks and stuff. I love man. to hear that. They're fucking. These guys I, are, these guys they're are awesome. They're cool, man. But, you know, um, I will say that it's something to think about. So I asked Barry Trotz about it. He said, you know what? I think it was Army. He's like, I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on this. I mean, the Twitter people may come after me for this, you know, but he goes, I, th- I, think, I think Army brought it up at the GM meetings that we should open up the discussion about the potential of declining a penalty shot and taking the power play. Would you have a problem if they decided to do not that? Not at all. Not at all. Although, it's fun to watch a penalty shot. Oh, it's the, it's the most exciting it's play so in hockey, cool, man. It's so cool, dude. Yeah. Now, if it's the third period and you're in a winter classic – and the ice is fucked up. I, well, the power play might, might not, you might not be able to move the puck away. Know. And sometimes it's nice, depends on if you're up by one, mm-hmm. would it be better to have a power play and just kill time That's and fucking what Barry rip, Trotz said. ripping shots at everybody? That's like, a, no, right? Barry Trotz said that. If it's late in the third period, I'm taking power play. And you're up by a goal, yeah. you can just kill the clock for the rest of the game. So, try, so Barry Trotz brought that up also. Who we love. He's totally He's cool. the best, dude. So very, uh, very thoughtful, and in fact, if that was Doug Armstrong, then that would make sense too. Um, but I hope the NHL really like. I think that would not change the game whatsoever. Like I think it'd, it'd be cool. Yeah, it yeah. adds some suspense yep. if somebody's taken down. Yep. Now, if if it's a guy like uh, you know Connor McDavid who's taken down on the on a breakaway, you may take the penalty shot. Maybe, although they're pretty. By the way, on the power I, I watching McDavid and Drysaddle live is just. A treat. Do you know what this guy is doing for the league, man? He goes on the road and whatever, how much energy he brings into the building when you play. Like, it's not easy for um, Edmonton, man. I'll, I'll give Edmonton a little bit of a shout-out. I like this Evan Bouchard a so lot, why? too, on the back yes. end. They're a cool-ass team. They I think are cool. Skinner's cool. Yep. I think Drysaddle's cool. Every time Drysaddle – when he, Hyman's cool, too, man. Parks his ass in front. He's good. Scores goals. Compliments McDavid. He's leading their time. team in goal scoring, I think. But he's a guy who uh, I dry saddle every time he comes off the ice when the when the coach makes like a, co- a line change he's like angry he's like <laughs> I think he gets a little pissy he gets time. pissy he's like he's like he like owns that coach probably you know which is not good I know so it's but not. but he is such a force but you know what I'll give uh, Edmonton credit because every building they go into every team they play against they're getting the other team's best effort dude yeah you know what I mean yeah. Everybody measures themselves up against those two stars. So is Toronto. To a lesser extent. Dude, Toronto comes into town. Everybody's like, let's go. I remember doing that. Yeah, you I play think in so. Toronto, I you, think so. You're getting the best big time. Dude, Austin Matthews, man. Is he MVP? Who's MVP? As of right if, now, who's MVP? I got my guy. Who's yours? Well, if 
Kucherov for a lot of people. It's got to be. He's like angry in a press conference again the other day. I I like Kucherov. He's just doing his thing, man. Whatever. I I don't react to it, man. I just, I I, I care about watching him play. And if McDavid catches Kucherov, which he could, the way he's putting up points right now, who knows? But um, I will say uh, if Austin Matthews scores 70, which he's got a legit shot. To score 70 goals, man. 48 right now. This guy's almost at 50 goals. He's 26 years old, Cam. Say he scores, he's he's approaching 400 goals, 350, something like that. And I don't want to get too far ahead of things, but all I'm saying is, like, if he's capable of scoring 50 every year, he's going to have to do that. He would have had more than one 50 goal season in his career up to this point if the season wasn't paused in 1920. I think he had 47 when the season was paused. Through 70 games. 1920? 2020. Yeah. You said 1920. Yeah. Like like 1920. Oh, my bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like 2019. Yeah. So the season was paused. He's confused me a little bit. Season was paused. He had 47 goals. So he would have been well over 50 probably. Yeah. Um, Say he scores 200 more goals before he's 30. And all of a sudden he's approaching 600 goals at 30. Is he a le- legitimate candidate to pass Gretzky? Maybe, yeah. And the way the game changed, and too. to pass Ovi, and who knows? Ovi started scoring a bunch lately. That's why I brought it up, man. The other day, you said, "Hey, nobody would want him at the trade deadline." I don't know. Like, if he can score at a elite rate, like he's done his entire career, a lot of empty netters. Oh, he gets a lot of empty netters. He just passed Gretzky. Gretzky got a lot of empty netters too. Listen, he's not the same player he was. He's only. He, 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 Watch he's, him, watch him. Play. I do watch you him, know. dude. I do. I see what him. I see, and I love him. Yeah, we've he's we've slow. been saying that all year. He hides out, just hides and, out, and he he's a he he knows when to be he knows yeah. where to be at the right time. It's a lot to he's deal with. He's not dominating with. the game. No, it's a lot to deal with for Washington because they've got you you're know. Bring Ovi on. No, not I'm any, not saying I would do that. I know you're not, but I'm saying like that's a that's a loud move. It is. And he's going to be like, but, I want. But know. if he stops scoring and just wants to play until he breaks the record, this this could potentially like you know be a lot to deal with for Washington. Exactly. I'll just no, be interested right. to see how that plays out. It, it may also, be it may be better for them just to say, okay, go do it elsewhere. Although he should never be in another uniform, and it would be a crime to see I, him break the record in another jersey. Please don't so, stay in Washington. I don't think Have your statue yeah, there, yeah. a Russian statue mm-hmm. in Washington D.C. Yeah. will be unique. Yeah. But I want to give Yager a shout out, man. Yeah. He was so such a good teammate of mine. He got pissed at me a couple of times for taking his rosary. I sat next to him. He is hardcore. I've never seen that before. And I know he still plays at 51 years old, but I've never seen a team like they they finally they finally uh, retired his number, but they let him skate out in warm ups. Dude, they, that was awesome. Incredible. That was awesome. Yeah, it's so funny. Like he's walking in, and I think it was like Sydney and. Uh, Sydney and Latang were like, "Hey, how are you there?" And Yogg's just fucking high five and everybody yeah. doing their you thing. You see Riley Smith come over. Riley Smith yeah. played with him in Florida. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Hey, Yogg's," like almost like, "What's going on?" JJ, and, they call him JJ. And Yogg's, they give him his f- you know full locker stall. He's getting it. It's almost like Pittsburgh he, did it good. Oh, they, they did, did it amazing, it. man. They Anytime well. you can see a player of his stature get recognized by a team that made him an absolute legend. And then on top of that, you get Mario Lemieux involved. I know. You get Ron Francis there. So you have Crosby, Crosby and Malkin. Latang going up to him and being like, man, you were my guy. Will you sign my jersey afterwards? I know. And this guy's still playing, too. You he's know? a fucking but, wheel. And he's just got such a presence. Like, very few players truly have that level of presence as an NHL legend. Like, there's not that many. Gretzky has it. I mean, it's hard to say Lemieux doesn't. But Yogg's outside of good, Yager, dude. man, his presence is just completely different than, you know, Brett Hall has that type of presence, yeah. man. You know what y- I mean? Yager, I remember talking to Yog, and he, I was like, you going to get married ever? He's like, hell no. And you want kids? He's like, nope. I'm like, okay. I remember he, he always take me home on road trips, and he had this big-ass BMW, and it smoked and stunk like shit. Cause he didn't smoke, but the car did. I go, dude. What was the car last? smoked? Yes. He had a $100,000 Mercedes. You said BMW. No, it was a Mercedes. My bad. Yeah, it wouldn't be Mer. It was a Mercedes. I remember, and we, he lived right by me, not in the same subdivision, and not not even a nice subdivision. He didn't spend that much money. Yeah, but he had a car, and it smelled like shit. I go, when was the last time you got the oil change? He goes, what do you mean? I go, when was the last time you got your oil change? Like that red light on the dash? Yeah, 
Yeah, that thing right there that's beeping. <laughs> and I smelled it. He had no idea. Really? I'm like, you've been in the league for fucking 30 years. Like, right. You don't know that you have to get your oil changed? You've been in America like, what are you doing? Years. But he was cool as hell, man. Yeah. And then they, uh, they hang his jersey up. And he talks about his girlfriend, who is too young. Too young to remember He's him like, playing like, yeah, in Pittsburgh. What's up, he baby? Give a fuck, he don't give a fuck. It's dude. like when someone took a picture of him with a girl. That girl he didn't remember. give a fuck. She's like, you gotta give me fifty grand. He's like, fuck you. Yeah. Take this. Go ahead, put that. And he's just like looking the other way. Go he's ahead, like, put it on social ahead. media. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Right. Give a fuck. He's about as cool as you can get. Honestly, man, his about as cool. His as you can cool. Get. The level of coolness just went up even another level, dude. It's after you've been seeing him kind of interact, how everybody re- reacts to him. They're like this. Like, this whoa. guy's out there for practice. Dude, he's skating in warm up. Has that ever happened with another team? I don't think so. Has that ever happened in, with another team? He another, took warm up, too. He took warm up. That's what I'm saying. He's cruising around doing lines with the guys, like fucking doing the, the all and four then they lines, lose the breaking game. out. Then they lose the game at the end. Are you fucking kidding me? They lose the Not game having Jake end. again so hurts them. Yeah, dude. Hey, if I'm a team out there, I know he's hurt right now. And I think the timetable for him to return is like, like he could still be back before the end of the season and all that, whatever. But, Pittsburgh's fucked. And if I'm a team who's looking for a scorer in the offseason, that'd be my number one target. I th- Jake Gensel's is one of those guys who you just he's good. Dude. You know that he he's no maintenance. Mm-mm. You just look at him. You know he's no maintenance. He's always going to be ready to go. Yep. And no matter where he plays, he's always going to be good. He's not like he doesn't, he doesn't act like a superstar. He no. doesn't demand attention. No. He just does it, and he does it in the playoffs too. So, yeah. But if I'm if you're Kyle Doobie, are you like fuck this? I'm blowing it up. Why don't you add another old guy? Yeah, add somebody older. Are they the oldest team in the league? I think so, yeah. Well, let's, let's just get older. No. I think it's past now, man. They don't Trade have, for Ovi. They don't, yeah, get Ovi. Dubas. Get, yeah, get Ovi. <laughs> Who else should they get? Yager. Giordano. <laughs> Giordano. <laughs> he already had him in Giordano. Toronto. Sign Yager. Yeah, sign Yager. Sign to, Lemieux back. He probably tried to sign him before he left town. They, they're in a jam right now, man. Like, they, they, ain't, they don't have it. They completely collapsed against the Kings. The Kings are starting to rock and roll a little bit now. Kings have it going on now. You know what? They got yeah. that boost. It's not good for the Blues. A couple of games ago where they uh, they scored late against Boston to tie it up. I don't know what Boston was doing like off the faceoff there. They just left Kopitar like, wide open by himself in front. Yeah, dude. And like these guys are so good. Dowdy sees him wide open in front, and it was just like – a bang, bang, little easy wrist shot right in front, and he deflects it. It's like they've done it 5,000 times in practice. You know, like, it, a lot of guys would, like, maybe miss the puck, maybe, or, like, the goal st- the goalie still makes a save. They just made it look so easy. And then on the game winner against Pittsburgh, how Kopitar just knocks the puck down or whatever. Was it against Pittsburgh? Who'd they play? Uh, the second game, and they're uh, – Pittsburgh won uh, – or uh, L.A. and they're – whoever they beat the other day, man. Um but Kopitar just knocks He's the puck good. down, and uh, I think Kempe scored with like three minutes to go in the game. Shorthanded, by the way. Yeah, no, that was yesterday. Yeah, yeah that was against Pitt. Yeah, it was against Pitt. Kempe fucking scored. Shorthanded, that. man. They were on a two on one. Yeah, and Kempe had a. F- Kempe could have either passed. He had there. options. He yeah. had options. He's like, yeah. no, I'm gonna go five hole. But do you see the play by Kopitar at the blue line yeah. though? He's good, dude. Kopitar, if he played in like Toronto or the Rangers. Or like, I mean, I know everyone recognizes him as know. a Hall of Famer. He's not allowed, whatever. dude. He's not allowed. But dude, he's, he's played forever. Solid. He's put up a ton solid. of points. I'm just saying, he would be recognized for being as good as he really is. I think, I think people he's know. I think pe- I don't think, think he so? is. But it's like it's almost like Drew Doughty, man. Like these guys, he's huge. You're playing on the West Coast. You you just don't get as much attention. It's just the reality. They got a pl- They're probably like, I don't give a. Fuck. And they've won cups. They don't. They don't. You they think don't. you think him sitting no. on his back patio does not care with a fire going, does looking at the beach. Care. Get out of here. Does not care. Exactly right. I gotta give a uh, our boy a shout out. The con dog Bedard. Good, oh yeah. Uh, good for him to come back, man. Looked pretty good the other night. I got a twelve year old out there with his uh, he, bubble. I, and then he's like, uh, he's in the uh, he's in the scrum. And some reporter asked him, uh, what was a word they use? I forgot it. Is it? Uh, Transitory? No. So, so a big word. I have no idea what that means. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, what an idiot. I'm like, no, dude. Like, he didn't go to school. <laughs> you yeah. Know? He hasn't. Yeah, but like. He didn't talk to people. People that who, use who maybe huge, did go to school. That, know that have an enhanced vo- vo- vocabulary. If you're a writer, mm-hmm. you better have an en- enhanced vocabulary. Connor Bedard doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. He needs to go play hockey. Why were they so, chirping him? Yeah. 
Because he didn't know what it was? He forgot what the word was. So something about being Cares. resilient and whatnot. Can he score goals? Can he score goals? Are you a good guy? Can you tend into it? Can you tend into it and rip fucking pucks <laughs> and come back from a jaw injury so and still dominate? Weird. I love that kid, man. Mm -hmm. I'm rooting for I'm him. I'm watching Macklin Celebrini, by the way. I watched some college hockey on Friday I night. Yeah, I saw and some And he's of that. damn good. But, you know. Is he the con dog? No. Okay. He's, he's not. And there's two con dogs, so you can, like, you know. No, the smaller one, the younger yeah. con dog. Uh, no, he's not. Bedard. No. I think he's good, and he's going to be a good NHL player and probably make a lot of all-star games and play for Canada in the international competition. And who knows? Maybe he'll be a Hall of Famer one day. But he's not this automatic that we've seen walk into the league, like the Crosbys and the McDavids and the Bedards yeah. that we've seen McKinnons. McKinnon struggled, though. He did. He struggled when he came in. He did. But uh, then he got red hot in the playoffs. Can we give Petro a shout-out? Hell, yeah. A thousand games. A thousand shout -outs. Love him. Love you, Petro, man. Yeah. Good for him. Carlo was there. Koyak, yeah, we love to. Hanging out over there. A thousand games. Hey, man. man uh, sent Petro a text. The reality is, seen just about every game that he's played, for the most part, in his career, dude. He, I'll never forget when he first came in, and they sent him back to junior not once, but twice. Oh, I was there. Um, there was, I don't want to, I don't want to call the guy out, but I had somebody in the organization who no longer works with the organization say to me when he got sent back for the second time, I don't know if he'll ever be able to play oh. <laughs> about Alex Petrangelo. Wow, dude, you done fucked that doesn't one doesn't work in the organization. So I want to make that clear. Because there was nobody who's yeah. there now. I could see people. But they said, I don't. And, and, I, and I will say, it didn't sound as crazy at the time because he wasn't ready to play in the NHL. No, but you saw him in practice. I remember sitting with uh, Danny Highnote and McKee, and he mm. walks in. We're like, <laughs> look like Andy Dufresne walking into the fucking prison yard, like a tall drink of water. And we're like kind of laughing. And he goes out there, and you can just tell he's just like, and you're like, oh, God, he can really? move. Kind of dangling Walt. Dang on a couple He's guys. He's the guy that makes it look easy. He made it look easy. We're like, oh shit, this mm -hmm. this motherfucker's good. Yeah. And uh in Petro, man, he had a hell of a career. He's still going. Love to see you in a blue note still. Mm -hmm. But uh it's business. It is what it is. But a little shout out to you, man. Damn Let, good Let's career. get it going, Columbus. Columbus. You love Columbus. Let's, I just want to it's, it's go time. It's go time, dude. It's go time for a couple teams. It's go okay? time. Arizona. Go oh, Arizona's gotta go. Fucking Calgary. Arizona Calgary's losing. Fucking who else am I thinking? Anaheim needs to get going a little bit. Anaheim, we thought they Jesus were good for like Christ. the first week of the season. Figure it the fuck out. Who am I missing? He on? will though. I think I think Verbeek. And on the will. East Coast, you know, like Montreal's still in a fucking jam. Toronto, I'm sorry, but you know, you're you're there. You got all these guys that are fucking superstars, man. Even Willie Willie Nylander, who we love. 500 points. Like, you got guys, dude. You got guys. Hey, you better figure it people out. People chirp at me about, because uh, I was talking about Montreal. They're like, oh, they've got some players coming, Lane Hudson. And so I, listen, okay. I watched Lane Hudson play several games now. He's going to be a good player, but he's not coming to save the franchise, okay? Yeah, they don't have anybody to save the <laughs> he's day not right now. He's uh -uh. not Quinn Hughes. He's not McCarr. You need a goalie. You need a bunch of stuff. So I like Lane Hudson. You know, He's good at Boston. Yeah. But he, he ain't coming to save the day. I think it's a sneaky team right now. They got the other one, you know, whose parents Fren French kissed when he was oh, drafted. Oh God! Don't hey, note to <laughs> self: that? don't have your parents French kiss when you're whenever drafted. You, yeah, it's now it's about you, psycho. Like, don't French kiss. Give a peck. No, give a they, fucking hug. They gave it. They went. You might as well bang each other in mm -hmm. front of everybody. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh it's so weird. We didn't even talk. Can I just real quick though? Because I want to get your thirty second take. What? We didn't talk about the. Uh, the sausage vest. Where? <laughs> In waste management? Yes. Oh, fucking swinging dicks everywhere. Which apparently, by the way, I talked to people who go there and they're no, like, there's no, chicks there's cruising. chicks everywhere. They're just I not know. like by the ropes. It's a bar stool kind of like a um, fratty kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. It's just not my jam. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was hooked they're up They're like, down, I'm wasted. And like they're, they're falling in, in mud. mud. And then there's like women walking by with their like beautiful white dresses on, like trying to like show off. And the guy, this one guy's like falling down, like blah 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 blah. He's like, rawr, rawr. and these poor women, beautiful women walking by, and he's like stumbling into them, hitting women in all white dresses, and they're like, oh my god, mud everywhere. I don't fuck with that shit mm -hmm. unless I had like a box with this where we're doing shit. Like, I'm not hanging out with a fifty. So you wouldn't want to go to that. I, I mean, think we'd have fun at it. We'd have fun at anything, but I would be annoyed by, by, by dudes, you know.
like drunk dudes. Drunk dudes bumping you like, yeah, golf, <laughs> dumping beer like on me. Come in like, like uh, get the fuck off. No, me. they'd come in like, uh, you know, slam their glass bottle on top of yours so it, like, it you pumps know. up. Like you fucking <laughs> idiot, I'll dump it all over you then. Now, now you owe me a beer. To Andy McDonald all the time. Yeah, like yeah, the and it goes, yeah, it just that's just too much. That's too much for me. Mm-hmm. Your your girl got inducted. I, who did? Oh. Brittany BG, I got a lot of messages wow. about BG. Very emotional. Wow. Um, and she, even, she was. You see the dunk she fucking threw down? Was it a windmill? <sighs> People are chirping Excuse that All Star game, by the way. Excuse the me? NBA All Star game. Did you hear about Kenny Smith? No. What happened? He's getting bashed. What did he do? Because he said she should be playing with dolls or he, something? Was that her? No, that was. Was that him during that, the No, that was like somebody else chirping Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith's like, yeah, that was a good uh, three point uh, thing, but, uh, you know, maybe um, she should. I think Kenny Smith was trying to like be like, oh, she should do the the women's rules where the three point line's closer. Yeah, and if you're not going to do that, then you might as well give her. And a he's r- a former like three point, yeah, you know, sharp shooter. And he's a good dude, oh, and like he says awesome, the right dude. thing all the time. I love Kenny. But he's getting bashed Why? by people, the because, Twitter people, because like they yeah, were yeah, the nerds. The, because you can't, you're not allowed to. You're not you allowed. Can't have fun. You're not allowed to chirp WNBA. Mm-hmm. You sure? Who you better not. You could chirp the NBA players, uh-huh. but not the WNBA players. Yeah, and so he kind of he didn't even chirp him. I think he was just saying something to the effect of like, "Well, sh- maybe he they should use a regular ball if they're going to do all the they're going to do the regular three oh, point." Oh, so she she was using a woman's ball. Yeah, was she shooting from the women's three point no, line? She was shooting from the men's three point line. Well, what's wrong with saying that? Well, why are you using a small ball if you're going to do the men's thing? You might as well use a men's ball. Oh. Well, she's uh, used to the women's that's, ball. That's, I, I don't have okay, a but that's, issue with it. That, but that's but my, who's the one who said that she should be playing with dogs? Whoever they were with. Was it Jefferson? Who, who, <laughs> I don't know. Who I, was it? Because I just saw the it clip on funny. Twitter, dude. But he's getting bashed. And I'm like, joking, Kenny's like a good man. dude, man. Kenny's like, fucking funny. He's hilarious. He compl- Like, you're chirping Kenny after what Shaq and fucking Charles say. Charles fucking bashed San Francisco, too, by the way. San Francisco Barkley. or San Antonio before? San Francisco. Oh, is the, that where the All Star Game I was? I believe so. Golden State. Yeah. So like San Francisco. It f- wasn't in Indy. I don't know why he's chirping San Francisco. I don't know where it was, but he was chirping San Francisco, and that kind of dude. Everyone's up. chirping the whole NBA. Fuck the NBA. Like people are like, if you don't care, we don't care. Fuck the NBA. And, God, and, and like boring. and like Larry Bird prior to the All Star Game. I like him. He was like, hey, please try. I'm watching like old school videos of uh, like. You know, Elijah Wan and Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing and all these dudes, like they're going at it in the All Star game. Yeah, dude. I was talking about that with the old school, some old school hockey guys, man. It used to be like that in the in the NHL All Star game now. I like uh, back the NHL in the day All-Star. too. I think the NHL has the best thing. It was going. better this year. It's been, I think it's, it's got been the, terrible in recent years. Compared you know to the the Big Four, like if you think the Pro Bowl is fun, then you got yeah. But I don't the NBA All Star game used to be good, Cam. They used back to in the really day, not now. Yeah, it's but like even like in the Allen Iverson days, like th- I remember like some like hardcore fourth quarters with both teams going back and forth and like yeah. really trying. It, it, All star games. These are guys tough. are shooting it from like their side of half court, trying to be funny, like with like twenty seconds left on the shot clock. Like, what like are you Kate doing? Clark did to win uh, to get the uh, the all time. The all time. She's kind of cool. She gave a uh, yeah. like a you know her celly. Somebody was chirping her too. Who, oh, it was Antonio Brown. Mm-hmm. Oh. Did you see what he said? He <laughs> called her uh, uh, Bruce Willis or something, or something, Mel Gibson. Yeah, that Mel Gibson. <laughs> He's AB. fucked. AB's fucked. So fucked. why would he say that? Because she kind of did <laughs> look like it a little bit. Mel Gibson back in the nineties. That's not funny. I won't laugh That's at that. That's not funny. I won't laugh at that. Caitlin cares. But BG, listen, we all hey, we all get chirped like BG, fuck. Very emotional. She's what up. She needs to bring the dreads back, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's still with her her uh, partner who is with her every step of the way, like doing the press conferences with the president of the United States when they're rescuing her. And she, they did a full-on, the like, international trade-off with Victor Boot, Victor which you still haven't Boot, watched. Man. Cam will watch fucking Vladimir Putin for an hour yeah, and a half talk about the history of Russia, but you won't watch Victor Boot. I already know about Victor Boot. You got to watch his interview. I already dude. know about him, the arms you know what dealer. I mean? Hey, what about uh, Luchik? He got off it. I don't know enough information. And man. you know what? Like, if I'm Boston, I get that. I'm like, yeah, we don't need a, we don't need the hassle. Really? Yeah. You don't bring him back? Yeah. I love you, Luchik. And look, man. Sometimes when, like we've, 
We've all been. Corey Perry came back. We've all, I know. We've all been in a weird situation. Corey Perry looks good for the. Looks pretty good. Oilers, but can Hold I on, say one wait, thing? Let me, let me say what some about. Go but ahead. I, I, the whole situation's fucked, and we, it, it, you know, sometimes, man, you you come back home, you're both drunk, you had a weird night, yeah, shit goes down, you start yelling at each other, mm-hmm. somebody freaks out, your wife, I'm gonna, I'm calling the police. Oh God, like it could happen. Even, mm-hmm. the, even it told you, Kate and I fight. The next day we look at each other like, what the fuck we just do? Hug mm-hmm. each other, you know what I mean? Like, you get emotional. Yeah. Alcohol is involved. Who knows what else is involved? I think that was the situation. So she dropped everything. But it, it doesn't matter. Like, it's already, hell's already broken loose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, but if I'm Boston and I love Milan and he's going to be okay, but I, I wouldn't fuck with him. I would just be okay. like, no. So I kind of agree with that. That's all. That's what did all Boston say? say? They were like, we're not going to bring him back on. Yeah. So. Well, they just can't take on that type of public. No, Outcry. it's not worth it at that point. It's a shame that it didn't work out for him. You know, it I was an exciting homecoming for him to come back to Boston and end his career where it all started. It all started where he was a big part of it. And that. Um, so we're thinking about him, man. I like yeah. him, dude. He's a friend of the but show. But they dropped the charges. Dropped the charges. I, you know, she wasn't going to testify against him. No, I guess the nine one one call was not admissible. I don't know what it wasn't the admissible. Like was. it was probably just fighting, and she lost her mind. She's mm-hmm. probably drunk too. Who knows? Yeah, but it's just a. But it's a shame because, like, you know, he it's a had a call. He had a great career, it's a call. and no one's gonna sign him. So sometimes you, you gotta when you're fighting. Don't you think? No, no unless gonna, there's no a gonna gonna close that. friend of his that's like no involved with that. another team that make. No one's touching that. Like Arizona, oh maybe or Columbus. Arizona will sign anybody. They might sign hey, Yogs. Getting back real quick to, uh, and we're gonna get to uh, Steve Larmer. Yeah, we got yeah, but um. Like Johnny Goudreau, and I know, like, I, I don't you know. Love, if, what's up with you and Columbus? I don't know if Columbus needed to sign Goudreau either. Like, <laughs> I know. You know what I'm saying? They're like, wait, wait, we got Goudreau. We got him. You see, guys want to play here. They, they love it here. They want to sign here. It's we like, got him. But then you find out that, like, his only other options were Jersey and the Islanders, but Jersey offered him, like, 8.5. So he wants to play there because it's the most money. He's a very laid back, chill guy. I hear he doesn't mind it there. It's not like wanting out. He's probably like can breathe. He just he's just chill. Li- but he's very competitive though. He does want to win I, on the ice, man. Everybody is. But like if you play in if you lose in Calgary, it's ten times more amplified than losing but I in keep, Columbus. I'm like, reading about well, Columbus was like looking at talking to Calgary about bringing Elias like Lynn, Lynn home. To Columbus stop trying to sign like nine million. You need to like strip it down. And rebuild this shit from yeah, the ground from the floor. ground up, no doubt. And then I like, don't stop trying to like pretend like oh well, if we had this guy or that guy, I, no, we're no, gonna no, no, find no. ourselves to be competitive and we're gonna win. You're not there. No. You're not good enough. It's it, not gonna happen. Lose. And and I and I hope Rick Nash becomes their next GM. Yeah. Okay. Although people are chirping me for that, be like, we need someone with more experience. Like whatever. Whatever. Then I mean, he didn't have. I guess playing a thousand. It, it doesn't no, count. No. No. That doesn't account. He, he needs a Dubas type. He needs to have uh, yeah. scouted 5,000 games. Yeah. No, he did scout. <laughs> when you play, you're yeah. fucking scouting. He doesn't okay? know what to do. You don't think he's, he's Surround him by some people that can you know, handle some You don't think he's evaluating other shit. players when he plays fucking 1,000 games? But get like, out of here. You guys wanted to go out and get Lynn home because he had chemistry with Goudreau, man. Like, he, just stop. Calm down. Columbus, stop. Figure your shit Rebuild. out. Rebuild. Jesus Christ. And then we're going to get on board with you. Because so. it's a beautiful place. Steve Larmer, tell the people about this interview. Stevie coming. Larmer. Explain. Well, man, he's had a hell of a career. How the fuck do you go 884 games in a row without getting hurt in the 80s when they're tomahawk chopping you with fucking tree trunks? And I even asked him, like, how do you how do you not just take one off the pinky or take one off the ankle and b- break your foot or whatever the case? Like, it's so mind-boggling to me. How you can go that long, especially in that era, I know. without getting hurt, and he—it's like, unbelievable. He, he wasn't—he didn't play a soft game. No, whatever. he's in the mix, man. He's getting a ton of minutes. You know what I mean? Everybody in the '80s, in the '90s, like it was like required for them to be able to, to handle themselves. Yeah, remember like they would tell him when he was a rookie, like you haven't gotten in your first fight. Yeah, yet. when are you gonna get in your first fight? Big difference. We need to know if we can count on you that you're gonna be there. On the ice, if shit when goes shit down. shit goes down, dude. You're 100% right. Smoking darts, pack of cigarettes, day. Know. <laughs> you know. So he, I, didn't, he's a, I didn't think that was him, though. I, he doesn't I, do many interviews, though. Like, so, like, he's not, like. He, but great player, Great man. player. He's a Stanley Cup winner. 
you know, from Keenan to Messier yeah. to fucking Roenick to uh, Sutter, Daryl Sutter. Yeah. I mean, he talked about all these cats. So it's yeah. a very Eddie interesting Belfour. listen. Eddie Belfour. You know, he's got his pilot's he license. talked about Yogs, too, actually. Yogs as well. Lemieux. So he's got a lot of shit to talk they about. They lost to Pittsburgh in the Stanley Cup final when yep. he was playing for Chicago. That's when they had the movie Sudden Death come out with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm. Remember that movie in 92? No. You don't? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, of sudden Death? Yeah, of course. When the bomb... I don't remember Sudden Death, but more Jean-Claude and, 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 the, and they show, like, you know, Chelios was in the movie and oh, shit. Like, okay. you don't remember that? No. Look that up. Sudden Death. Oh, Jean-Claude Chelios Van Damme. was in the movie? Yeah. That's funny. They're playing Pittsburgh and Chicago. How many playing movies the has Chelios been in? Roenick's been in a couple uh, TV series. I hey, know that. but retire Roenick's number. Retire Belfort's. I don't know about Belfort. He wasn't there long enough. Maybe, maybe he was. I don't know. Uh, but retire Steve Larmer's number in Chicago. No offense. When I think of Chicago, I think, I think of, of Steve Belf- Larmer and I think Belfort, Ed Belfort and Ronick. Yeah. That's what I think of. And Savard. And Dennis Savard. And um, fuck, who else? Yeah, it doesn't matter. But, you know, you're going to sign, or you're going to retire Kaner and uh, Taves and Se- Keith and Seabrook, Seabrook, maybe Crawford, like, you got some. So gonna, I, I get that yeah. because they won cups, but like, let's recognize the guy that played almost 900 straight games for you and had like over 900 points. But we asked him too. Do they reach out to you? Yeah, they invite me anywhere, and yeah, I say, yeah, I'll yes, go out he's there. Cool shit. I think he's, he's not a, complaining. About I think it, he's man. a recluse too. Yeah. I think he's kind of like, I don't yeah. need to be in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, dear, right? He only yeah. made 900 thousand dollars as most as, as, uh, ever, ever. His, for, for a single season. Yeah, for a single. Well, that's and he's still playing in the 90s when they were still. I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah, but those early 90s. I know. So anyway. um, all right, let's get to Steve Larmer. Yeah. I, if you don't like, if you're thinking, well, I don't really care, but I don't really know much. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. We always bring on interesting guests yes. for you guys, man. So and he had a great career, man. Yeah. Um, firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. That is the link, Cam. Get to that link and get it now. Get that level one, baby. Right here. Get those energy drinks. Hell yeah. Um, the level one is what I take for uh, my protein. Uh, two scoops is like 50 gram, grams of protein. Like I'm like, oh, I'm, al- I'm almost there. Makes you when I have one shake, I'm almost there for my requirement for the day. Well, that's what I do in the morning time when I get up at 4.30. Mm-hmm. I'll make that shake with some frozen fruit, and it just coats my yeah. stomach because yeah. I can't eat a shit ton and try to perform on the radio yeah. for three hours. Get the bars. Get the bars. Yoink. Um, get the, it has nothing to do with it. I just saw it. That has here. nothing no, to do with it. In it fact, here. it's the opposite of first form. It is true, actually. That's associated with beer, uh-huh. but you could yoink these bad boys too, man. These no, energy you can drinks. yoink anything, dude. I was telling you that the other day. You can open up any can and say yoink. Well, if you, do, if you do drink, First Form's your best buddy because in the morning, like, I get rehydrated yes, with the do. fucking rehydrating little packet I take and I shake it up. Yeah. Oh, bam, smash yeah. that fucking thing. Um, this is First Form. How's that look? It's, looks it's damn like, good. It's a hoodie quarter zip. Yeah, I had quarter zip I wore with mine the hood. with the radio. I know. And it was, I was sweating through it, so yeah. I had to change and put this bad boy. Oh, on. you wore it today? Yeah. Oh, we would have had the same thing. Yeah. Um, you look more jacked than I do. I do. Don't I know. Know. Yeah. So get the. Uh, I'm thinking of BG right now too, man. I mean, she's you, she's going to her left, her right. Oh, she's oh, she's six foot she, eight. She, she can barely dunk. You can pretty give, cool. Give it to her. What an athlete. Give it to her in the low post. She may step out. Oh, that's sick. Somebody scored 50 points in the All-Star game. That's cool. NBA's awesome. And they were all dunks. Fuck that. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick, baby. I put a picture on my uh, Instagram yesterday because they, they, they sell those uh, energy drinks down down there at the Enterprise Center. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Use our link. Use our link. Slash Cam and Strick. Check that out. Yeah. All you guys. Yes. They're the real deal. The real deal. You know who else is the real deal? The Illinois Recovery Center. Oh, Cam. man, oh, man. People dude. have been reaching out to me. Have they? What they say? Like, I think it's awesome that you guys do that. And yeah. Talk about that and help people. Well, man, it, of course, everybody knows somebody. And Chrissy Pondoff and Eric Conley are right there waiting for you to come in, man, with open arms. They have a bed available. They always leave a bed available, but they've been pretty a busy. What? A bed. Yeah, okay. A bed available. <clears throat> a what? You a can't bed. say it, dude. A bed available. I, they always have a bed available. Turn your hearing aid up. Good lord! No, I just went. And, I know. Did I tell deaf? you that I just went and yeah, had it cleaned out. I saw out? the shit that you cleaned it out with. It's disgusting. It's amazing. Gross. Just like Matt she Holiday was so back in the day. So smart, this girl. It's like a. It's like a bug that yeah, went in. She was so smart. Oh yeah. She's like a doctor. Or something. Well, they usually are. It was like. It's like a big loud machine. Go ahead. Yeah. So you know, turn your hearing aid up. It's all good. But uh, anyway, Illinois Recovery Center. Of course, everybody knows somebody that's dealing with this kind of stuff, and you're not far away. Right there in Swansea, Illinois, they will take care of you. They don't fuck around there. Home of Clayton Keller. You get in there, and you get shit done. You get work done. And when you 
when you're 30 days, I went and talked to all the patients the other day, and I could just tell the different variations of who's what. I could tell this guy's only been in for a couple days. I could tell she's been in for two weeks. I could tell he's been in How for five weeks because I could tell by their eyes. I could tell by their energy. Their skin I color. Every, oh god yes. yeah like a pam pale as fuck right now mm -hmm. i could tell dude i could tell how this their happiness to down and out the guy sitting in the corner who's a blues fan mm -hmm. was too fucked up to talk to me really? until he got the nerve to come over i go how long are you in five days that's what i thought so he had been in for five days only five days or four days or whatever it was so he's going still going through that fucking what nastiness, is he going through? nastiness andy like were you like withdrawal this type thing you just cold and they give you medicine to help with all that they stuff, do, dude. Yeah. So you're in a lovely bed. Mm -hmm. You you look out, and the big windows everywhere, so you could see the little meadow that's right by there. All that little stuff adds up. So I could always tell, boom, boom, boom. But eventually, he came over, mm -hmm. and we sat and talked for about 45 minutes. Okay, so cool. I could just tell, but they're doing damn good work, doing God's work over there. If you know anybody that's going through this stuff, you get a hold of me, you get a hold of Eric, you get a hold of Chrissy. Mm -hmm. You call the number, which we'll give you to you right now. And let them know that uh, you need help, and they will take care of the insurance, yeah. all that kind of stuff, man. They make it easy for you. That's Illinois Recovery Center. I don't give a fuck if you're from Canada, you're from Pennsylvania, you're from Nashville. It doesn't matter. They will help you. Illinois Recovery Center. IRC, IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com, 800-743-0971, Cam. Yep. That's the phone. Say it one more time. 800-743-0971. Illinois Recovery Center. Check that out. And reach out to us if you want to get in touch uh, personally with Chrissy or uh, Eric. I can help you do that. Yeah. yeah. People did chirp me about the yoink thing. Oh, they did? They're like, you're yoinking with beer. Oh. And you're, you know, yeah. so she was, oh, I'm like, well, I yeah. mean, yeah. I get you. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need um, to chill out, you know? Maybe you need to get this big bottle of chew Away from I'm hiding it's it. on the camera. No, it's and not. you need a better cup, dude. Dude, I for fucked the camera. that. Up. My bad. You gotta stop bringing this. I, cup, I, 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 you're I, blocking I, first form. First man, I, for, I, I You're right. You My bad. Me? My bad on that. Uh, Bellman of Bellman.com. Cam at Bellman, you get no. Swinging dicks. Fuck them. Swinging dicks. They're obnoxious. <laughs> Fucking Hoosiers. <laughs> Swinging their dick around, fucking flirting with your wife. Buick GMC on one Good side of the God. street. On the other side, it's a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Cam. Good God, they're annoying. Mm. You want to go fishing, by the way? No. They're annoying. Dude. Annoying. Swinging dick motherfuckers. Fuck all of them. That's not happening at Bellman. You know exactly what I'm talking about, going to a fucking car dealership. Whipping their dick out. Ooh, I'm tough. No, you're not. You did nothing in high school. I played fucking. No, you didn't. You didn't do shit. Swinging dick, motherfucker. Mm. Good God. I went into Cabela's yesterday, and I almost bought, like, a full-on, like, kind of like a starter's kit for, like, fishing and stuff. So I was, like, thinking, like, I'll go maybe fishing. you'll go fishing. I will go fishing. You just go said fishing. no, dude. But you well, not will. with you. I will go fishing. Oh, my God. I will go, I will go fishing. I love boats. I love water. I've had boats my whole life. It's a waste of money. And everyone knows that. There's a lot of waste of money things you can yeah, buy, like homeboy. Can Nothing more than a boat. Like Andy going on vacation every two seconds. Sometimes it's a waste of fucking money. That money, you could put a down payment on a boat and fucking drive that thing till it fucking blows up. Hey. And have ultimate experiences. Your kids will love it so much if you had a boat. I will say now, this, though. I don't want you getting one because you have no idea what the well, fuck you're doing. I'm I don't not, trust I ain't, you. I ain't driving the if boat. shit goes down, Andy's going to be like, I don't know. Ty, take care of it. <laughs> so I don't want him to I'm do that. I'm not driving the boat. Ivy will handle yeah, it. Yeah, Ivy will do it. Um, but I will say at Bellman, uh, if you have a boat and you need something to to uh, haul that boat back and forth oh, to the water, they got some shit they've got some trucks. shit kickers. You're goddamn right. Buick GMC on one side yep. of the street. On the other side, Cam, it's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Something for everybody. You have a lot of options with that. You do. And no swinging dicks. So. And I'm being serious on the swinging dick thing. Mm -hmm. People love when I say, say that, but Danny I'm dead boy. serious. Hey, Danny. And Dale. Dale. And Kenny. Kenny. God dang, Kenny. God dang it. All right. Dale. Steve Larmer. On this edition of the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 278, baby. Love you guys. Fueled by First Form. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by First Form, baby. Use our link and do it today. www.firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Get jacked now. They are the real deal. Get that protein. Check out the apparel. Eat those bars. And drink those energy drinks. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Yeah. Now on to the interview. How are you, man? Everything good? Yeah, everything's good. What are you doing nowadays? What are you doing? We want to know. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not doing much of anything. Just uh, I got a young lad that's playing hockey in the American League for uh, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, which is a Philadelphia farm team, and and watching him a little bit, and uh, just had a my other uh, stepson there just had a, a grandson two days ago, so that's uh, our our fourth grandchild. So that's what's keeping us busy. Lehigh Valley, that's a nice place to play. You got a nice rink. That area is pretty cool. That was one of the nice American League cities to go to. Yeah, it is actually. It is a nice place. So it's uh, we've been down there a couple of times to watch games, and it's uh, been very enjoyable. Hey, I'll never. I remember when Scott Mellonby started like scouting, and he was like, you know. That's the first American League game that I ever saw in my entire life. You know, it's actually pretty nice. Did you ever play in the American League? Is this the first time you've ever seen an American League game? Uh, no, I, uh, my first year of professional hockey, I spent my first year playing for the New Brunswick Hawks, which was a, uh, a shared team in Moncton, New Brunswick, between the Toronto Maple Leafs and uh, the Chicago Blackhawks. So I think that was eight. 81-82. Uh, I spent a full year down there playing. Or Orville Tessier was our coach. And uh, Billy Riley was our captain. And I think 10 games into the year, the commissioner back then said, if you guys don't make a whole bunch of changes, you won't you won't win 10 games this year. And uh, we ended up, uh, I don't think we lost 10 games, and we ended up winning the, uh, the Calder Trophy. That's right. I read that. I could answer that question for him, oh, Andy. Well, I could answer that have. question you for him. Have. So when you when you play as long as you have, and Stanley Cup winner, played so many games, should be a Hall of Famer according to a lot of people. Like after hockey, are people asking you, presenting jobs to you, uh, working for teams and whatnot? Uh, no. When I uh, no, when I first retired, I come back home and I went to school. Uh, and then after that, I went to college for a couple of years, took a bunch of different courses just to kind of stay in a routine and, and, and learn something, uh, got my single engine pilot's license. Uh, and then, uh, I ended up, uh, through Dougie Wilson, uh, working for the NHLPA, uh, doing, uh, some, uh, player relations stuff. I uh, did that for about seven or eight years, and uh, you know when when Bob got fired and all that crap went down, uh, it was time for me to leave. So, what'd you make out of all that when everything went down? I mean, that that was kind of crazy. I mean, I imagine you're talking about Bob Good now, right? I mean, that whole yeah situation, and then having to miss a full year of hockey, right? I mean, that's when you retired, correct? Well, from the PA, but I mean, uh, we got locked out when I was playing. We got, we went on strike and I think it was 1991, uh, for 10 days towards the end of the year, just before the playoffs, it was about a month before the playoffs that was over, uh, the, the rights to our likeness. So, uh, hockey cards, uh, any, uh, anything that had our name on it and our likeness, our picture and whatnot. So. Uh, that was what the strike was about. And then uh, two years later, we got locked out uh, for half a year. Yeah. And and two years, I think it was two years after that, we got locked out for another half a year or whatever. Yeah, I'm getting so, my uh, lockouts mixed up, man, because I'm thinking 04, 05 is when they missed the full year. 94, 95 was the partial year. So you're retired after that. So you're working with the PA, and then all that went down. You got all these guys making a ton of money. And, you know, we, we ended up, like, transitioning into this next phase that we you have now with the cap and all that type of stuff. So, and the rollback and everything that was going on. What do you think of all these players, man? You knew a lot of these guys because you played against them even before you retired. They were young when they came into the league, but they were pretty vocal. Some were even going against the PA membership, right? Was that kind of crazy for you or no? Well, it was because there was a lot of what we had and the decisions that were made prior to that was what was allowing them to make the kind of money that they were making that at that time and for them to want to basically it was i want my money let's go back and play 
that kind of stuff. And, you know, the, the kids that come in behind us can deal with the cap <laughs> as they have for the last uh, almost almost 30 years now, 25 years. So um, I think there were more, a lot, there were more players, I think, back prior to 1994 making $10 million a year uh, than there are today or it's just caught up to today if you know what i mean yeah wow. you mean 2004 are you, are you talking 1990 i mean the guys were making 10 million bucks back in 94 well, or no well, back in the, in 2004 2004 yeah, yeah. no i got gotcha. you yeah. i got gotcha. you yeah, prior, prior to the prior to the salary cap coming in there were you know T, keith stachuk was making 10 million dollars a year uh jagger was making 12 uh, plus there was no escrow, oh. you know, Joe, Joe, Joe Saki signed that big offer sheet from, from, uh, New York, yeah. you know, and I think Colorado matched it, which was, you know, $20 million a year, you know, they were front loading things to try and screw the other teams and stuff like that. What's the most you ever made? Yeah. Uh, the most I ever made, I think was, uh, 900. For real? Really? Uh, yeah. Dang. You know what that's yeah, well, equivalent the, the to? Thing, I mean, uh, uh, equivalent to in today's money? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, I you're don't scoring 40 it, no. goals a year, Steve. If you're scoring Shit. 40 goals a year, man, you got a 100-point season. I can tell you that it's a lot more than 900. <laughs> With that slap shot, baby, you'd be making 12 easy. Yeah. Well... I always say it's not, uh, uh, you know, I blame my mother on that, right? Exactly. I, 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 I tell her, I go, oh, Mom, how come I wasn't born, born in 1971 instead of 1961? Exactly. And then I wake up the next day and I go, Mom, thank God I wasn't born in 1951. So, <laughs> you know, every, every, everything is, 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 you know, progresses over time. And at the end of the day, you just hope that, you know, kids – that come into the league can continue to make a, a, a good living and, and, and as much money as they can. How's your pilot's license? So was that a difficult thing to do? And do you fly around? You got a little Cessna that you rent out? Do you have? No, I, uh, I got my pilot's license and then I realized that the, the, the cost of owning a plane and keeping a plane was going to be way too much and that it was probably – you know, I would rather be the guy sitting in the back of the plane having a beer than the guy at the front of paint, at front of the plane driving it. So yeah. I'm I'm much better at the back. Hey, I've got one more question about the PA before we move on from that because I I do find it interesting you work for them. But Bob Goodenow, like, what was your relationship like with him? It's it's it, it depends on who you talk to. Everyone kind of has varying opinions, and. Did you ever, like, was it ever an issue? Like, I, I remember here, you know, kind of covering this Mike Danton situation. David Frost was an agent. His, uh, I want to say Goodenow's son was playing for David Frost as a coach. And there was all this, like, crossover between Goodenow and Frost. They had, like, a relationship. And I'm just, like, a friend, you know, whatever. They knew each other, you know? Like, was that ever, like, talked about internally? Like, is that something you were familiar with? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were yeah we were aware of that that uh, Bob's son you know uh, played with them and 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 Frost was the coach of the one of the teams in the in the GTHL I think at that time yeah for sure how did he become an agent he just he was able to get certified and be a be an agent well I think I think you know there's a process that you go through and I mean imagine it's a little bit harder and uh, there's a lot more you know caveats or, or it's a little bit stricter to get into being an agent now than it was you know 30 years ago or whatever but there was uh, still a process that you had to go through and 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 all of that so uh, i imagine he would have had to have gone through that process in order to get certified yeah so you play, play a thousand games like did you did you save your money after you retired, were you like, man, I'm going to chill for a bit, kick my feet up, I can do that, I got a nice little nest egg, or were you like, man, I got to get back to work and keep this thing going? No, I was 
a pretty good saver, I think, and and whatnot, and and tried to take, you know, good care of myself and 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 and, and the money that I had earned and and whatnot. So uh, no, I think I've, I've lived a pretty comfortable life and been able to do the things that I want to do. So I have no complaints whatsoever. Good. Listen, man, growing up in St. Louis and uh, and just you know loving the NHL and loving the game, man. I mean, I. I saw you score so many goals, yeah. man. I mean, I and mean, you're always chewing gum, by the way, man. Were you always Fire. chewing gum when you were playing? Like, how'd that start? Uh, well, we didn't have mouth guards back then. <laughs> the ones that we did have, you wore on the outside. So the chewing the gum thing was a way to, it was actually, uh, it kept my mouth moist. So I wasn't dr drinking a whole bunch of water and, and liquids while I was playing and, you know, getting filled up with that. So the, the gum was a good way to uh, keep the moisture in my mouth without drinking too much. And, uh, you know, it was always something I could, you know, chomp down on when, when things got a little intense. How was the training back in the 80s? I'm so curious about players that played in the 80s. Like, were guys smoking darts? I mean, coming into training camp, like, okay, I'm going to do a couple push-ups here and there. Like, like you, I'm sure you, you probably still pay attention to the game. You see how guys train now. Like, how was it in the 80s? I'm just just curious. Well, I, I played 11 years in a row without missing a game, so I had a great training regime. <laughs> I don't know how you did I that. I want to hear it. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> well, well, somebody once told me a dozen, a dozen a day keeps the doctor away, so... We kind of lived by that back then, but we did, you know, there were different, it wasn't as formal as it is now, I think. So, I mean, basically you were left on your own for your summer training and stuff and, and whatnot. So, I mean, I always, you know, I tried to take as good a care of myself as I could. Uh, you know, I probably smoked a pack of cigarettes a day back when I played, but, you know, I would ride the bike and, and, and try and stay in shape somewhat but i think there were you know guys like al secor that, that i played with keith brown uh eddie belfour they were you know fitness fanatics uh compared to what the rest of us were but uh you know my first four or five years in the league there was really nothing in the off season uh we didn't skate in the off season uh, most of the places or you know, when you guys went back home or whatever, there was no ice in the summer. Uh, nobody really, no cities really kept the ice in or whatever. So you're kind of left on your own to, you know, do maybe running and some push-ups and sit-ups or some guys, you know, went to gyms or whatever. They're not as big as they are now, but, you know, it's different now. So, you know, we did what we could. And I think 1985 or 86 when Mike Keenan came in to coach, uh, you know, he kind of changed our dressing room in Chicago and, you know, our pool table was taken out and our, our little lounge that we had to hang in, it was all converted into a, you know, it was a gym. So the first day of training camp, you walked in there with him coaching and you heard, heard all these rumors before, but now all of a sudden you see it and it's like, oh my God, the world is changing as we know it. So it changed probably in about 85, 86. So you were smoking when you when you played like like throughout your entire career or just like the first half of your career? And listen, we've had so many guys from your era on, man. Yeah. So it's not unusual. You're not the first person to tell us that. Including so Mike. I'm not I'm not overly surprised. But like, would you smoke between periods? And was that just like I mean, are guys just smoking cigarettes between periods, man? It seems crazy. Although I will say this, even when I first started covering the league, like in the early 99, 2000, there was always the odd player here and there that would smoke cigarettes between periods, but certainly not as many as when you first came in the league, you know? Yeah, no, we would. Yeah, we. Would, I think we had, my first year in Chicago, there was eight of us that used to smoke cigarettes. So we used to smoke cigarettes and, you know, we'd have, you know, one or two cigarettes in between every period. You come down at the end of the game, and there'd be two cases of beer in plastic with ice on it, and you'd grab a couple of beers and have, have sit in your stall and have a cigarette, and just like men's hockey. <laughs> what <laughs> kind of darts? It wasn't. <laughs> I smoked the Marlboro Lights, Van, and sometimes Vantage. 
Vintage. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You, you weren't chewing Nicorette, were you? I, I was curious if you were chewing the Nicorette, the nicotine gum, you know, during the games. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> they never, they never had that back then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I mean, uh, when I first started playing too in the early, like in the early '80s in the old Chicago Stadium, and that there was a lot of games that. As, you know, on the, especially the Sunday night games where we had probably five or six thousand Bears fans coming from the NFL game to our game, and you couldn't see the time on the clock uh, towards the end of the third period because the <laughs> building would be so filled with smoke. smoke, right? So, yeah, I mean, the times have changed. Oh, yeah. They're all wasted too, fighting with everybody in the stands. <laughs> like, my God, what chaos. I know. Well, Love it. Yeah, some of the some of the best fights that were were in that rank were up in the third balcony for sure. What about Al Secord? You brought him up, and Andy and I were talking. Even when we were young, we're both from St. Louis, and our parents would take us to games. And anytime we go to a Blackhawk Blues Blackhawks game, you thought his name was Secord sucks. I think children <laughs> thought that's actually what his name was because that he, was the chance. They hated him here. <laughs> How was he as a person? We know he was a was a fitness guy, but. He just has a crazy reputation here in St. Louis. Tell us about him. Well, Al's, I mean, he's a fantastic guy. Great teammate, number one. Uh, and just like a gentle giant away from the rink. The most polite, the nicest, kindest uh, human being that you would ever meet in your life. Uh, fabulous guy. I mean, I always say it's like what I miss I think about everything is, you know, Al Secord might be the last guy to score 50 goals in a year and have 35 fights. Uh, you know, back when, you know, tough guys were tough and they could also play hockey. And Al was a great hockey player and he was really tough. And uh, there were many nights where, you know, he created all kinds of space for Dennis and Martin and a, and a guy like myself to be able to go out and play and, and make it a little bit easier for us. So I just, you know, I got a lot of respect for Al and, and, and the way he played and the fact that, you know, there'll never be another player that will score 50 goals in a year and probably have 35 fights. Nope. Listen, you played a long time, obviously with Daryl Sutter and, and, like, I've talked to, you know, Bernie Federico a lot about this, too, man. Like, and he and Brian Sutter were, like, best of friends. And then all of a sudden, like, your best friend becomes your coach. It's a little bit different, right? I mean, things are just not going to be the same, no matter how much you think that they are going to be the same. So what was that transition and that adjustment like for you, where all of a sudden this guy goes from being your teammate to being your coach? How'd you handle that? Oh, not very good. <laughs> Same way Bernie did. <laughs> no, the, I mean, I, I, I drove to the. I, I mean, I drove to the rink almost every day with Daryl for the seven or eight years I played with him. He was our captain, and and that, and you know, and then he got into coaching, and obviously the relationship changes, you know, from that and and whatnot, and it was like that was probably one of the reasons why. I had asked to get traded out of Chicago was because I would rather have Daryl as a friend than as a coach. And, uh, you know, our, our team was in a, 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 you know, transitioning, I think, uh, from a lot of guys that I grew up playing with. And, and a lot of those guys were gone and, you know, a lot of new kids and new faces were coming in and, and whatnot. So I just figured it would, you know, it's probably time for me to go. Everybody else that I've played with here has, has either gotten traded or, uh, or retired. So maybe it's my turn. What's the difference between Keenan and Daryl as coaches? Uh, not... I don't, not, not, not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, they're uh, old school, obviously. I mean, I think the thing is, is that they were what I liked, you know, playing for Mike. I, I didn't mind playing for Mike because, uh, you know, I didn't really know him personally and whatnot, but he, you know, kind of at that point in time in my career, he kind of pushed me into be becoming a, a uh, better, more complete player than 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 what I probably would have been. Uh, gave me a chance to kill penalties. Uh, 
and play in, in different situations like that, which was a lot of fun for me. Uh, and I think he played every game he played to win. There was no, uh, you know, he went into every year thinking that we're going to win 82 games and, and whatnot. And then, you know, he was short in his bench 10 minutes into the first period. If guys weren't going and I, you know, he just, it was, we're playing to win and we're playing on our toes and I like that, I think, from a player's perspective, I would rather I would rather lose ten nothing trying to win than lose two to one uh, playing to not lose. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, yeah. and I think that's the difference between being on your toes or being on your heels, right? And it's much more fun. At least, at least you're working to try and accomplish something when you play on your toes. So listen, man, and we know guys, uh, you know, same way. Yeah, you know, we know guys who play for Daryl, both in LA, certainly in Calgary as well. Like I'm watching this guy, man, his post game press conferences. I'm like, there's no way somebody could be like this miserable, like this unhappy all the time. And you hear like behind the scenes that he really isn't necessarily always like that. It's kind of like John Tortorella. You know, you the, the more you talk to people who know him, and the more you get to know him, you realize that like he's he's a different guy behind the scenes. When you see Daryl, like in a post game news conference, like recently, is that how you remember him? Is that how he's always been? Or do you think he's changed over the years? No, I mean, I think that's, I think it's the, it's dealing with the press yeah, and the media. And it's like, you know, at some point in time, you get sick of answering the same questions over and over. And I think for some of those coaches that, you know, Daryl's not a, you know, I mean, he's not grumpy like that all the time and, and, and whatnot. He's a great guy away from the ice. I mean, he was a great teammate I had for, for, you know, seven or eight years and uh, had the opportunity to play with. And, you know, he had a big role in, in molding me into the type of player I became too. So, um, but they're, you know, I think he just gets fed up with answering the same questions over and over and over and, and, and whatnot. And, you know, I mean, away from the game, he's, he's a great guy and, uh, and, uh, and a wonderful person to be around. Describe the scene in Chicago, early nineties, you just win a big game, United center. You guys all go out Chicago stadium. Ch- sorry. Ch- <laughs> my bad. Chicago stadium. My bad on that. And like you got Jeremy Roenick, who's a young kid. Like, like was it was it a fun place to play? It seems like a blast. We love that city, especially now after they won three cups. I mean, how was how was the scene after games? Were you like, hey Jr., take it easy tonight? You know, we got <laughs> we got a game in two days. Like, how how was it? No, I mean it's a great city. Uh, number one, it's probably one of the greatest cities in North America. And uh, it's a great place to play. They have a great fan base. And I think they really, it's that Midwestern attitude, you know, they, they, they work hard and they play even harder. So it was a fun city, uh, you know, to live and play in and, and whatnot. And I think, you know, in the nineties and whatnot, obviously I'm a little bit of an older player and stuff like that. So it was a little, you know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time going out downtown and, 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 and hanging out. Out and I was never a nightclub kind of a person, or I was more of a, a downtown type of a guy than a uptown yeah. kind of a guy. So you know, a lot of a lot of the kids that came in and 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 whatnot, uh, you know, they go out and have their fun, and and you know, as they should, right? Uh, who's to tell them any different? I mean, we, we just when we grew up in a different era, it was like when we would come into play in different places. We would go, you know, drop our bags off in the room and we'd all meet at a bar, you know, a couple of blocks from where the hotel was. And we would walk in there and we would throw $10 down on the table and we would have a, you know, everybody would show up and we would have a couple of beers. And, you know, you know, there would be maybe four or five, four or five guys would leave after after the, the first couple of rounds. And then the rest of us, we'd throw $10 more in and have a couple of more beers and. You know, sometimes we were out of there, you know, it wasn't until 11 o'clock at night, but it's just, you know, and then it kind of changed in the nineties as guys made more money and, and started hanging out at different places and, and stuff like that. 
Hey, how was Ronick when he first showed up? Were you like, what were your impressions of him? Were you like, wow, this guy is going to have an unbelievable career? Like, he's an incredible hockey player. Or did you ever have to pull him aside and, and like, calm him down? Like, was he loud in the dressing room? Was he respectful to the older guys? Like, what was he like when he first came in? Because he was so damn good right away, you know? Yeah, no, he was a great young player to uh, come in and, and, and play with. And uh, we had a great time playing with him, myself and Michel Goulet, and, and tried to help him as best we could and, and, and whatnot. And he just uh, he came in, he had a lot of energy, but he had a – and he played, he played a real physical game for, uh, for a young kid at that time. And, I mean, Mike Keenan, obviously, was our coach at the time and, and whatnot. So, you know – you know, he had Mike on too and whatnot, but, uh, no, he was a, a great kid and, uh, uh, and, and fun to be around. And, uh, he had, he did have a great career, a really good career. So, yeah. okay. I mean, 884 games in a row. How, how does that happen? How does that happen in the eighties too? When you got tree trunks of sticks, everybody's hooking and slashing and grabbing your phone, your equipment sucks. How can you not just fall into the boards or take a shot off the foot and miss a game. And it's just incredible to me yeah. to play that many games in a row. How'd you do it? Well, I think you, we grew up, we grew up playing with contact all the way up. So when we started playing hockey, you know, there was contact in might and novice. And, and now we have rules that you, they don't introduce body contact until you're in Bantam or, I think Bantam it is now when you turn like 14 years old. So, you know, we grew up learning how to protect yourself and to know how to, where you need to be around the boards. I always said, I don't, I don't mind getting hit once, but I don't want to get hit twice. What I mean by that is, you know, I was either going to be right on the, I want to be on the boards or I want to be 10 feet from the boards. I don't want to be three feet from the boards or four feet where somebody hits me and then I get knocked into the boards and get hit again. So you learned how to play uh, and you learned how to protect yourself. You learned how to take a body check. You learned, you learned how to play, I think, you know, differently than how these kids learn how to play now where they don't have to be aware of these things until they get to junior or college or, or even pro for that matter. Yeah. But shit happens, right? Like, do you look back on that? Meaning, like you could take one off the pinky and break your pinky and you're out. Like, was there any game where you were hurting mm -hmm. and you ate one off the foot or the ankle and you're like, fuck, this is a 50, 50. And you're like, you know what? Screw it. I'm playing this game. Cause I'm not missing this. I mean, I mean like that must've happened well, a bunch of times. Well, there was always, I mean, the, the first, the only day you're healthy is the first day of training camp. And then from then on, you're always playing with bumps and bruises and aches and pains and you're never healthy. You're, they're only healthy on the first day. So, I mean, it is what it is, but there were times, sure, where, you know, my back was not good, and that's eventually what ended up, you know, pulling me out of the game. But there were some nights where it was painful to even do my skates up. Uh, you know, I hurt my knee a couple of times, uh, or I hurt my knee once, I guess, and, and it just happened to be at the right time where we had three or four days off where I could go in and get a shot, and sure enough, it fixed it up, right? So they were all, you know, timing, I think, was a lot of it. Uh, you know, just, you know, learning how to play properly, I think, and protect yourself and, and all that kind of stuff came in handy. Uh, you know, my great workout regime. Yeah. <laughs> we, heard, luck. We, we heard about that. You got lucky, hey, too. Hey, but 11, 11 straight <laughs> years. But then you hold out. Yeah. You got this contract situation. That didn't bother you at all. You weren't worried about ending ending the streak, and what? And was the team trying to use that as leverage? Be like, hey, you got to sign this deal. You got to keep the streak going. Yeah. I'm just curious how you got to that point, like where you just like really didn't give a shit, man. You you were gonna do what's right was you know for you. Well, I didn't have. I had another year left in my contract, so it wasn't like I was. I could have went and played or whatever, but it was just time to go. Like it was, you know, the the team was changing. Uh, I had been there for 12 years. Most of the guys that I had played with coming up, like the Daryl Sutters and the, the Bob Murrays and the, the Dougie Wilsons and the Keith Browns and the Troy Murrays and the Dennis Savards and the Al Secords and the, they were all gone, you know? So it was, 
well, it's probably my turn to go and whatnot. You know, you, 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 and and they we were always we were always good enough to make the playoffs, and but not good enough to, you know, get through two or three rounds. To you know, we got we had that one run in I think '91 when we we uh, got to the finals against Pittsburgh and lost. Uh, and that was, you know, and then after that, it, it, it kind of went down a little bit. So it was hard to, uh, you know, it's hard to play when you're kind of stuck in neutral all the time. You're not going forward. You're not going backwards. So I thought maybe it was time for me to, you know, I needed to change the scenery and either go play on a real young team that doesn't have a chance to win and, and you know, play with some young kids and help them or go to a team that might have a chance to win. So then it worked out you know, great for me, uh, you know, landing in New York and, and having a chance to win a Stanley Cup. You know, one of your guys' best teams may have been that 93 team. When you guys, I think you guys won the President's Trophy. You definitely won the division, and you get swept by St. Louis. I was at the game, oh. game four, when Craig Janney scored the the – uh, the goal off the wall where Holy and, and Belfort kind of bumped into each other behind the net and Belfort's breaking his stick over the crossbar. What do you remember about that play? And, uh, I mean, what was it like playing with Eddie, man, when he yeah. just loses shit all the time? We've had him on here before, yeah. by the way. He was awesome. And his whiskey's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> It would have been goalie interference in today's game, so oh, yeah. that goal would have never counted. But no, Eddie was uh, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie was he was a freaking competitor, man, a great teammate and a goalie. So you know, you just kind of let those guys do their own thing. But uh, no, I remember the one time in in training camp when uh, EJ McGuire was our assistant coach back then, when Mike Keenan was coaching. We had all these fitness tests that we used to have to do. Um, that Roger Nielsen originally brought in and they kind of continued it. And one of them was uh, running and they wanted you to run five. You had the choice of running five miles or riding a bike for 20 miles. So, you know, the older guys, we all, none of us did much running or whatever. So we would opt for the bike. And then Eddie ran, uh, did the run. And EJ McGuire was a, a, a really good long distance runner. So, and I think that day in Chicago was probably like 95 degrees and the humidity was really high. And Eddie, they used, they had to run around the track there over at the University of Illinois. And uh, Eddie beat him by like a minute and a half. I think he, his time was, he ran five miles in like 20, 28 minutes or something and beat EJ by, I don't know, a minute and a half, I think it was. And EJ was so friggin' mad he wouldn't talk to anybody for like a week and a half he was so <laughs> pissed at eddie for beating him that's how but that's how hard eddie worked right and and he would get you know and there were nights when we were playing and stuff that he would it was almost better for us if if we had if we allowed 35 shots on that he, he had a chance of getting a shutout and if we allowed 25 shots on that we, we would have a hard time winning. He would, because sometimes I think he would kind of, he would, he was a lot better when he was busier than he was when he had a chance to maybe fall asleep. Eh? <laughs> Grant Fear, too. We just yeah. had him on. He's the same kind of thing. What hey, about, what, what, what about Hashik, though? When Hashik yeah. came in, like, were you thinking he was going to turn into the player that he was? And, like, was he a little bit different? Like, it, we're, we're trying to figure him out, yeah. man, because some guys come on, they absolutely hate this guy. Yeah. Other guys, obviously, have, like him, but even the guys that hate him appreciate him for his greatness. So, like, did you were you like this guy? Like, what's this guy all about, man? When you first kind of got introduced to him, well, he, he was, uh, you know, for us in Chicago, and that he was one of the one of the first times that we ever had an opportunity to play with a European hockey player. Him and Frankie Couture. Frankie was a defenseman that came from the Czech Republic, and Dominic was the goalie. And, you know, here it was, this guy was like so unorthodox. He didn't play net like Eddie. He didn't play net like Patrick Y. He didn't play net like Curtis Joseph or Grant Fuhrer or, you know, he just did anything he could to stop the puck. And, you know, and I mean, there was always unwritten rule, unwritten rules in practice about, you know, you don't want to go down and rifle pucks off the goalie's shoulders all day long in practice. 
or you know if you did that with tony esposito or murray bannerman they chase you around the ice with their stick so you know when when dominic first came over and then you know when practices and stuff like that he had no issue with that i mean he was he was stopping pucks with his head and taking them off his shoulder and did everything that he could to to work as hard as he could and and to become the great goaltender you know that he that he turned out to be and i think it was at at that point in time it was we had both Eddie and and Dominic and Dominic was I think maybe a, a year and a half into kind of backing up Eddie and, and whatnot and not really getting as many opportunities to play as he as he wanted and and you know they 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 chose to check you know keep Eddie and and they traded Dominic to uh, to Buffalo and I mean he just went on and had a, a great career when he got that opportunity to be a a full time starter so. Playing in a hardcore era that you did, 80s, 90s, like who who is a defenseman? I mean, you're getting you're logging a lot of ice, man. You're going against top players and whatnot. But who what what defenseman scared you? Where you're like, damn it, I gotta go against this fucking guy. He's gonna catch me with my head down. He might catch me with a knee. He might hurt me. Who who is that guy? Well, there were all kinds of those guys. I think every team had you know, two or three of them, you know, Minnesota with Maxwell and, and I think St. Louis was when Schnepsey and Butcher were there and, uh, you know, Detroit had, you know, some, some players, Toronto. And then we played back, back then. It wasn't like we played, uh, you know, we would play Saturday night away in St. Louis and then we would have St. Louis at home on Sunday night. And every weekend was almost like that. So the next weekend it might be we played Minnesota at home on, or we played in Minnesota on uh, Saturday night, and they and then they would come back and play us on uh, on Sunday night. So most every weekend we had like six periods against the same team. Uh, so it created a whole bunch of rivalries back then. And as you know, I mean they called it the Chuck Norris division for a reason. So yeah. uh, you know, I mean you were always on your toes, and you had to be aware of who was out on the ice at all times, and who you were playing against, but it was, it was fun hockey. Damn right. You, uh, you and Dennis Savar, were you guys tight, like really close friends or just teammates? No, well, we're good friends. I would always say like we played together for a long time and, yeah. and, you know, we would hang out together and, and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I mean, Dennis is probably one of the most generous guys you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, and a fabulous person once again I mean just I had a real uh, it was a real for me it was a uh, you know a great time a great time to play and I had great teammates and 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 I think you know you you become a product you know we're you become a product of your society right and you know they say it takes a it takes a, a village to raise an idiot well, I think they raised a pretty good idiot. <laughs> so, yeah. But I playing with, you know, I got to play with, you know, you know, Daryl Sutter and Bobby Murray and Dougie, uh, Dougie Wilson and and uh, Rich Preston and uh, Greg Fox, Tommy Lysiak, Tony Esposito. I got to play with for a couple of years. Uh, you know, Stevie Ludzik, my good friend from from Niagara Falls, that we played junior together. Yeah. Uh, you know, Al and Dennis, Michelle Goulet, Jeremy Roenick. Um, so we always had good people around that, uh, you know, they were good, good people in the dress room. They taught you a lot about hockey and they taught you a lot about life. What about Mario? You know, you played against him in his prime, you know, how was he like the most difficult guy to deal with as far as offensive player? He's so big, he's so skilled. I mean, I, I explain Mario in his prime. Well, uh, <laughs> he had a wingspan. <laughs> he had a wingspan like a condor, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, the puck would be on the left side, be like 20 feet from his body, and then all of a sudden it would be on the right side, you know, 40 feet away from where it used to be. So he was a friggin', he was a big physical specimen that was, he was, you know, I mean, it was almost impossible to try and take the puck off. He was incredible. 
But Yager too, like I mean, because you're playing against Yager in the Stanley yeah. Cup final. Like uh, this young kid comes in, yeah. Like his, his his name like spelled backwards is like Mario Junior. It's like very bizarre or whatever it is. You know, it's like yeah. he, he kind of had some similarities, man. Were you guys like, holy crap, this guy's gonna end up being better than Mario? Which I wouldn't say that. I mean, but certainly a uh, iconic player though. Well, he's still playing, so yeah, he must true. be doing something right. But <laughs> but he, you know, but there's another guy that's like another six foot four, six foot five, six, whatever, two hundred and forty pounds. You know, big, long legged. You know, m- you know, learn learn how to use his body, protect the puck, and and the, between the two of them, I mean, it was it was damn near impossible to get the puck off him. Do you? So, do you watch hockey now closely? Do you watch current? Yeah, games I watch. Now? Yeah, I watch it. We get. I mean, that's the the byproduct of living in southern Ontario. Ontario is we just get inundated with uh, Leaf games, unfortunately oh. or fortunately. <laughs> what do you like about the game now, and what don't you like about it? I mean, it's completely um, different. I mean, completely different. Yeah. I, well, I'm I'm not a. Uh, you know, I don't. I, you know, when we grew up and we were taught how to play, it was always stick on stick, body on body. So in today's game or whatever, you you know, guys got one hand on a stick and you and you knock it and it knocks out of his hand. It's a slashing penalty. Oh my God. Well, oh. in a slashing penalty back when I played was when the guy broke a stick over your arm. Yeah. So there's just different ways that they're interpreting the rules that maybe, you know, what we had to go through when we played as opposed to what they have to go through when they, when they play right now. But it's, it's, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt, but, you should not be allowed to go through the neutral zone with your head down, reach for a puck and then get hit when your head's at, you know, hip level and somebody's getting suspended for five or six games because there's no, uh, but that's how these guys have grown up playing. And I understand that. And the game is, it's changed that way. And nobody wants to see anybody get hurt. You ever get a concussion? Not that I remember. (laughs) <laughs> that means yes I don't hey, think so <laughs> Hey, I gotta ask you about this Go ahead I was gonna say, I had Gary Nyland hit me one night When he was playing for the Maple Police In Maple Police Garden He hit me into the boards one night And my shoulders touched under my chin That, that was sore I'm sure the spotter made you leave. I'm sure the spotter made you leave the bench. (laughs) The spotter. No, I just, it was, I couldn't breathe. And then I made a really nice backhand pass up the middle of the ice one night. And about three steps later, Wendell Clark put me on my ass. And that was another one where it was, I I didn't think, I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought my my whole chest had collapsed. He hit me so hard. Hey, I got to ask you though, man, like, the experience of playing with Gretzky in the 91 Canada Cup, man, you're on the same line with him. You lead the tournament in goals. I think you were one point shy of him. But he took that hit from from Gary Suter, man, like into the boards. I mean, I, it's the hardest I've ever seen Gretzky get hit. And he tried to get up. He couldn't get up. Ended up leaving the ice. I think he missed the first month of the season after that when the NHL season picked up, man. Like, were you on the ice for that? I remember Holly was on the ice playing for Team USA, and he was like asking Gretzky if he's okay, man. Where, where, do you remember the hit? Like, were you on the ice for the hit? Like, what was your guys' reaction knowing you were losing Gretzky? Like, he wasn't going to be available for you guys the rest of the tournament. Well, I mean, obviously, you losing the best player in the world is not a good thing, yeah, right? So, you know, obviously, you're upset about that, but I'm not sure what happened on the play or if I was on the ice at whatever. But I think it was something he went in the corner, they were in the corner, and I think Wayne went to spin and turn or whatever. And, and Suter just came in and hit him on the numbers from behind into the boards or whatever. So, I mean, obviously, the rules are different now than what they were back then because that's probably a 10 game suspension now. Oh, yeah, but back then, you know. You know, most guys wouldn't wouldn't do that. And, you know, if they did, it wasn't like it was intentional. It was kind of, you know, you're kind of taking the angle and and then all of a sudden the guy turns back into you and you hit him and whatnot. So, I mean, it's not fun to see anybody get hurt. 
when they're out there on the ice and especially for us at that time when you're losing you know the best player in the world uh playing in a tournament like that where every game is so important i think he uh he was he was chasing down a puck he and chelios actually went into the corner first he spun off a of chelios and then suitor just comes in although i saw you do that to trent yanni one time steve yeah. larmer you know so yeah. <laughs> he did hit, and al mckinnis was on the ice man and i was like wondering if al was going to come slash you jump in but like you're right guys are getting suspended for that now for sure yeah yeah exactly well trent probably deserved it <laughs> hey what do you think of uh like, I don't know if you paid attention late, recently, but, like, what do you think of some of the antics? And I don't really care. I, the game changes and, and, and shit, but uh, but you got guys taking slap shots in the empty nets. You got guys doing the fucking little gritty, which you probably don't even know what the fuck it is. Neither do I. You got guys doing, you know, uh, they're up by six, and maybe they'll do the Michigan goal and what. Like, what do you what do you take of all this new antics that the NHL kind of, you know, presents to us now? <laughs> it's like this thing with Morgan Riley. It's like, you know, everybody's right, right? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, the kid took a slap shot into your net from the top of the crease. <laughs> you know, he's he's telling you, fuck you, right? Yeah. I mean, whether, you know, everybody wants to believe that or not, and then, you know, Morgan Riley reacts the way he reacts, which, you know, in our day, that's exactly what would have happened, right? But... You know, it's a different world today. And, you know, he, he scored a goal into an empty net. Okay. Guys got their little, you know, touchdown dances going on after they score a goal. That's okay. Like, I, to me, it don't really matter anymore because I don't think anybody really cares. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, let's, go ahead. Well, it's, it's just a different world that we live in right now, right? Yeah. With everything that's going on around us. Uh, there is no you know tradition to history or or you know where you grow up and and you know you earn your stripes and you and you got to go out there and you got to you know play hard and get on the body and get your nose dirty and you know my first couple my first year as a matter of fact you know guys are always waiting for you to get into your first fight it's like when are you going to get into a fight? You got to get into a fight here pretty soon because, you know, we need to know when all hell breaks out on the ice back in that day when, you know, it was going to be like a five on five brawl or a bench clearing brawl, whether or not you're going to have my back. Well, they don't, you know, something happens out on the ice now and it's like everybody turns around, they look at each other and they go, well, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to react to this? You know, should we go over there and just chirp them or do I cross check them in the head or? You know, do I punch him in the back of the head or, you know, we just had a, uh, I was just in New York and did a thing with uh, Adam Graves and Jay Wells and, and, uh, uh, oh God, who else was there? Oh, Stephen Mato. So, you know, and it was like, man, I, Jay Wells was like, when he played in LA, when I played in, in Chicago and we played against each other for, for years and years and years. And then we end up on the same time, we end up on the same team in, in New York and, and and get a chance to play together there together and then boy do you ever have so much respect for an old school hard nosed defenseman that played the game the right way and you know they it's like I told them when we were in New York it's just so nice I'm so glad I played when I played and I wouldn't you know just with guys I mean nothing happened until you looked the guy in the eye you know there was no from behind you know, jabs and stuff like that. It was like, we're look, I'm, we're, I'm looking you in the eye and we're going toe to toe because this is what you did and you know you got to answer the bell. And everybody did back then, right? There was so much more uh, honesty and integrity, I think, amongst the players and respect than there is maybe today. But I, I'm curious though, man, you're the first person I ever saw that took a slap shot on a penalty shot. Yeah. Like on Eddie Belfour, of all people, he probably wanted to kill you after kill you, you. Uh, after you did that. Did you know you were going to do that before you even started taking the penalty shot? Like, had you ever practiced that before? Like, what led you, you know, to make that decision to take a slapper there? Well, I was not known for deking. Uh, I, I had a broken finger. I had, I had ten days. Prior to that, I had broken my finger and I just put a pin back. I had 
just put a pin into it or whatever. And that was my first game back playing in Chicago. So, you know, it kind of was one of those things where there's nothing else I can do. Uh, so, you know, I got in and that was always one of the plays when I played in Chicago and I got to shoot on Eddie all the time, I would always go seven hole, which is between the blocker and the arm or his body. Right. And, and that's where I scored. And I think he was mad knowing that that's where I was going to put it anyway and still beat him. But <laughs> the only goalie I ever deked was Mike Richter in the, in the Canada cup in 1991. And when I played with him in New York, I would always tell him and remind him that Mike, you know, of all the goals I've scored in this, in this league, you're the only one that I deked. <laughs> and then Pablo buried on that penalty shot during the finals there. And when Burry had that penalty shot and Richter stopped him, like that must yeah. have been a, that must have been pretty, you know, fun to see because Burry was dominating at the time. Skill yeah. was all hell. That's just uh, that was a buzzkill for the for the Canucks at that point. Well, it's like you know, I think one big you're always one big save away from winning, and 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 that was it, right, for Mike. And I mean, he really uh, he could. He, I mean, you can't win championships without great goaltending, and we had that all year with with both him and, and Glenn Healy. So uh, it's tough. And, and, and Mike is such a wonderful person too. Like a great teammate. Yeah. That's what everybody says. Everybody says it, yeah. What was Messier like as a captain? Like you obviously played against him all those years, man. Then becoming his teammate at an advanced stage of your career. Like was he who you thought he was or no? No. Oh, yeah. Everything and more. Yeah. yeah no, he was a, a, just a, I mean, uh, number one, a great person and a great leader, a great captain. Uh, we played against him all those years and when I was in Chicago and it seemed like every year you get stuck going up against the Islanders, you know, in the playoffs when, when they won those four cups in five years or whatever. And it was hard to, hard to ever get out of the, out of that division to get, to get to the other side. So, uh, and he was a big part of that team. I mean, I remember the one time in Chicago and I thought we had them on the ropes that year and, and uh, we're playing a game in the old Chicago stadium. I think we were tied one, one or we're up two games to one or whatever. And it might've been the fourth game in Chicago. And uh, cause I always talked to Jeff Bukaboom. He was from Lindsay here or whatever. And I say, I always asked him, I said, what was mess like that night? Because he was seemed like a man. He was possessed. And he said, he never said anything all day. Never say anything at the pregame skate, at the meal. Never say anything in the dress room before the game. And then we go to get on the ice or whatever. And, and the only thing that Mark said was, we can't take stupid penalties against this team because their power play is really good. And Mark was starting uh, the centerman that night for his first shift. So the first shift out there, he cross-checks Dougie Wilson in the head and gets a two-minute slashing or a two-minute high-sticking penalty, like in the head right? Two minutes. So they kill that penalty or whatever. He comes out of the penalty box, the puck goes down into our end and he goes down there. And I can't remember. He slashed somebody, broke their stick over their arm and got a two minute slashing penalty. <laughs> right. They kill it, go on. And after that, nobody ever went near Mark for the rest of that night. It was just, you know, he would look right through you. It was like, you weren't even out there. So, when I got to New York and had the chance to play with him, it was incredible because he, he he made everybody feel like they were the most important player on the team. And whether you were playing two minutes a night or 10 minutes a night or 30 minutes a night, you were he made everybody feel comfortable, welcome, like they were the most important player on the team. And he just did an incredible job. And, and you know, I mean, obviously Kevin Lowe and – Craig McTavish and Glenn Anderson and Jeff Bukaboom and, you know, some other guys that had, had been around a long time. Uh, they were great. They were uh, fun guys to be around and, you know, get your work in at the rink and, and uh, let's go play hockey. So you guys win the cup. What happens right after that in New York? What are you guys doing? You hang in the locker room for a bit and then what? Uh, I don't think we got out of the rink until about four o'clock in the morning or whatever. Oh. And then we went and then we went to some bar for a little while after that, but then the sun was coming up and it was, 
You're pretty you're pretty exhausted after playing <laughs> 24 games in 48 days. Pale, so, dehydrated. Yeah, a little, a little tired, and now all of a sudden you're getting sore. <laughs> no shit. So, no, it was good. And then I, think, I don't know what happened the next day. We were somewhere. We met down at the rink. I don't know. And we were out somewhere. And I think Glenn Healy, that was the night that he lost the Stanley Cup. Him and Nick were in some bar or whatever and put it down. And and uh, so I think they spent that night chasing it around, trying to find it. So. <laughs> Did you hang, out with Messier? you hang out with Messier? You hang out with Messier a lot? Like, off the ice, man, in New York City. Like, describe what that was like to go out with this guy. Well, I mean, he, he's, I don't know. I mean, he was, he was, he didn't never ever, I don't, it never, never came across as being better than anybody. Yeah. You know, he made you feel like an equal and you're comfortable, you know, you're just always comfortable around him. He was a, a good, just a good old boy. You know, down to earth, humble, uh, fun to be around. I always said, you know, it's like, man, he was the biggest kid in the candy store. He just loved being at the rank and being around everybody. And loved the game of hockey. You know, just a fun guy. What about the, uh, we were talking about brawls earlier. That uh, and, and, and Andy and I, of course, you know, growing up Blues fans, like the St. Patrick's Day Massacre. That uh, went on. I think Chaser started that whole damn thing. Yeah, he and Darren Maybe Darren Campbell, Campbell did yeah. something, grabbing JR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what was that like? <laughs> you, you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember that? Not, not, not right off the top of my head, but I think, did that involve uh, Dave Manson? Damn yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Scotty Stevens, baby. Yeah, Nance. yeah. Yeah. And I don't, yeah, it was, well, it was on hockey, right? No, but that's the, you know, the rivalry when you played when you played that many games against teams in your own division and, and, and it was like, you know, they were back to back. They were Saturday night, Sunday night. So, I mean, pretty much every weekend we had, we had that happening. And if it wasn't St. Louis, it was Minnesota or Toronto or Detroit. Um, but yeah, so those games were intense. You had six periods of, of utter hatred to each other. Hey, that 90, 91 season, like that, that was your best statistical season like you finished with over 100 points but like holly scored 86 goals that year like which is just crazy gretzky had 122 assists you had 101 points which, which was 10th best in the league i mean like guys were scoring 100 points man Shit. which is just crazy but playing against holly in his prime man like when he's scoring 70 plus you know those three consecutive years 86 like, what would you guys talk about, like, prior to the game to try to stop this guy when he and Adam Oates had their thing going? You, you, I mean, you're always talking about you got to hit him. You got to, you know, you, you can't let him get set up. You can't let him shoot. You can't, I mean, it's like the same thing with, against playing with Wayne. It's like, you know, his, his number was always circled on the board. You got to hit him. You got to play him well. It's easier said than done. And the thing with Brett was he always found these, he always went to the soft spots. Like he would be in between. So he would create confusion. So, you know, the defenseman would be like, well, he's out. He's just out a little too high for me to go out and challenge him. So he's got to be the winger's guy. And the, and the winger that's covering the point too is saying, well, he's probably in a little too tight. So he's probably the defenseman's guy and therefore nobody would ever take him. And he would find these little soft spots and Otsi could, you know, you know, thread, thread a puck through the eye of the needle. And, uh, uh, you know, next thing you know, it's in the net because he could shoot so good, but he would always find these soft spots and, and easy spots. And he had a great shot, you know, he didn't miss the net very much. Uh, he always hit the net, so you know you're always letting the goaltender make um, the mistake that way. So it was all good. Hey, a couple more things for you, man. You've been great, You've been and awesome. we appreciate. It. But I, I got to ask you this because somebody told me this a while ago, and I'm curious if it's true and if you even knew about it. But apparently, I was told Keenan had a trade, like when 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 Lindros was traded to Philly. With all that going down in Quebec, Keenan was trying to bring him to Chicago. Like he had a deal 
yeah. wherever Keenan was at the time. And you were part of the trade. Like, you were going to be going to Quebec, I guess, or whatever, right, yeah. as part of that deal. Is that true? Yeah, as far as I know. I mean, half our team was going to Quebec. <laughs> so, for, for Lindros. No shit. Yeah. Well, we had played with Eric. You know, Mike had coached him in 91 at the Canada Cup. He played in the Canada Cup with us as a as a player in 1991 and then came back and played junior for that year that Quebec had drafted him because he didn't want to go to Quebec and then they pulled the trade off with Philadelphia so how how was he like would you look at him like good lord eric? what a freak <laughs> eric yeah like he was different than everybody else well he was a you know big physical skilled guy right played mean. hard yeah mean yeah he was great and a great guy off the ice too. So, but you you knew he was going to be great, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So listen, the Hockey Hall of Fame. I hate even asking people like yeah. you know yourself and like Keith Kachuk and Ronick and these guys, man, who aren't in. Because I mean, what are you supposed to say? Like Almost. it's 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 uh, McGillney. It's like out of your yeah. control. But I will ask you, like, do you think about it, and why do you think you're not in? I don't know. I think it's a special place for special players. And I mean, it, it, I don't know that I played long enough or scored enough or whatever, but you know, it is what it is. You can't go back and change anything. And, you know, father time catches up with all of us. And, uh, uh, you know, I had my, my time when I played and I had a lot of miles because of the games in a row that I played. And, and I think everybody's got an odometer and it just runs out at, at, at when it runs out. So it, it is what it is. I had a great time playing and uh, I got to play with and against a lot of great people. So I'm just happy for that. Okay, but I don't understand why your number isn't retired by the Blackhawks. I will say yeah, that. Like, like come on, an email. come on, Chicago. Come on, figure it out. Retire this guy. He played. He no played shit. every game for eleven straight games. Like I know. I think you had over nine hundred points or something like that with the Blackhawks. <sighs> come on. And you finished your career with over a thousand. Obviously, man. Like, what's your relationship like with the Blackhawks? Do you get back there? Like, do they invite you to come back for stuff? Like, you think they're mad because you wanted to trade? Like, is there a carryover because of that? Because no. you know, they're going to start retiring Kane and Taves and Seabrook and Keith and oh, shit. They're, you know, maybe Bedard. maybe Crawford. Bedard's getting what? his jersey retired after this year. So, I mean, come on now, Ronick. You know, like Fuck. at some point, you would think that you guys oh, would, yeah. you and Ronick, man, oh. would get your jerseys retired. You know. Well, but they all won cups there, and and I kind of the that. Well, with that, and I think that's an important thing, yeah. you know. So um, it is what it is, and I have a good relationship with them. I, you know, if they call me and they need something, or if they want me to come in and do something, I have no issue with that whatsoever. So yeah, it's all good. I mean, life is too short to worry about the the small stuff and and whatnot. So. Hey, all listen, good, I love I love your attitude towards You're that, man. man. And those guys do deserve to have their jersey retired, no yeah. doubt about it. Hey, listen, congrats on a great career, man, and thanks for doing this. We thanks, appreciate Stevie. it. Well, thank you. The Camus Strip Podcast is brought to you by Bellman. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N. -N. Bellman Automotive, located where? Troy. Troy, Missouri. Buick GMC on one side of the street, right on the other side, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Get yourself some new wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was Stevie Larmer. Stevie Larmer. Number 28. used to chew gum, dude, every shift. I, if I had to ask him, and he, he didn't wear a mouthpiece to kind of like. He said it, it made his mouth moist. watery, moist. My wife doesn't like the word moist. I don't blame her. Neither does my she wife. She hates that. Uh, when the we number our, one uh, most annoying word in the world is, is moist. moist. Get out of here. So I thought it'd be vagina. Well, when my wife was having our first baby, the doctor kept coming in and asking and using that question and she was like hey i need you to stop asking me that and ask using that that word like you just gotta stop using that i mean it doesn't bother me <clears throat> that doesn't bother me you it's, want things to be want, moist like, when you're in the sexual well, realm of or things or cookies for example you know what i'm saying like you want your yeah, you want to be I, moist I, I understand that beating that up okay. kind of thing. i'm just saying oh my god well you, you know, don't have to take it to such a level well if if a girl's really dehydrated and you have sexual intercourse with her you oh, can tell oh yeah sometimes sandpaper or doing a bunch of coke oh, really, really i'm just saying a really oh dehydrated god. back in the day eh, mm -hmm. you would always know you know oh my god i know what stood out from stevie what <laughs> <laughs> what stood out from stevie i like stevie larmer 
Great shot. Yeah. He takes slap. Oh, he slap shot guy. A slap shot on the penalty. He's a slap shot guy. On man. a penalty shot, dude. Against Belfort. Belfort probably wanted to kill him after he did that to Belfort. Yeah, probably. And they knew each other, obviously. He went through a he he played for two really cool teams. But that's how bad he wanted to get out of Chicago and not play for Daryl Sutter. Yeah. And Anybody, he was buddies with Daryl Sutter I know. until he started coaching. Went to him. the rink with them. It's kind of like Bernie Federico and Brian Sutter here, well, man. They were like best friends. Went to the rink every game day together, yeah. and then Brian becomes the coach. Like it's just not the same. It's just like having a buddy. Say you're best friends with somebody, and all of a sudden, he's your boss. Mm. I'm your life. boss, dude. Are you? Yeah. Are I, you? I'm your boss. <laughs> Cam works we, for me. We work together. <laughs> but if somebody was your boss in a hierarchy than you, when you guys were equal your mm-hmm. whole life and mm-hmm. your buddies, that could yeah, that could hinder your relationship. I know. Can I give Reed Lowe a shout-out? Of course. Um, so, Lozy, I interviewed him uh, for fun on the Jumbotron the other night. Oh, okay. And he was all fucking, I mean, he's having Wasted. a good time, dude. Yeah. But we kind of brought the house down, and people loved it. Really? And, like, people from the Blues were like, that was, the, we needed that energy in the building. It was the McDavid game. So everyone was just, that's what I'm saying. There was so yeah. much energy in the building when McDavid and Dreisaitl came here. So you finally and interviewed him after you screwed him over yeah, last time? Yeah, the first time. Yeah. And uh, it was funny, man. It was funny. Well, what would he say? So we, we talked about a bunch of stuff, actually. But, uh, oh, on, on camera? Like, on the thing? Um, oh, well, Yeah. What was funny? I actually what he was did say, funny. He did say something funny. He was like, uh, "I love having Edmonton here. I'm just glad that I don't have to fight uh, George LaRock or something like that." Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or Stevie McIntyre. A little shout out, Big baby. Stevie. What up, baby? What's he doing right now? Fucking cowboying it up like a shit kicking motherfucker, like the shit kicker he is, and he's probably listening to us. Cause that's what he does. Give Brent Myers a shout out too. Man. I know still, I, he listens all the time. His man. kids are adorable. Oh by my the way. god, They're that so hair on cute. that kid. Brant, dude, you got a good thing going, man. He does. I've been watching a lot of Billy Tibbetts. <laughs> Still? Oh, does he, does he have new content out? He, every day, Billy. Should we get him on or no? You think we can handle that? Can our audience I think he's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, uh, fucking Billy, man. Like, you know, he's got... He's under the category of... of what? A predator. Oh, gosh, Still. he is. Yeah, so he moved out of Boston. Dude, so these cops bang on his door. And he filmed it? Yes. They're like, we're just checking up because we have to do this every month or whatever. And oh, he's like, you really? fucking mother. The cop played it cool. But Billy's like, fuck you. I think he's a sick of all Why of do you do that? I, I, do, you, when you, do you talk you, to police you, like you, that? God. I, I'm like, God, I no. Just, I just don't have Dude, if I get me. pulled over, hands on the wheel, lights on, roll down the windows, everything ready to go. Here, you see my hands, you see everything. Fucking A. I don't give a fuck if I'm pulled over in Eureka. Where that's my town. It's my town. I know them. I would still roll everything down. Boom. Turn on every light. Make sure. Have everything ready to go. Hands on the wheel. So they just all know. Like, we good? Okay, here you go. Boom. That's what you do, man. Yeah. That's what you, know, you do. I had a buddy in just high school respect who would like drive me home. He was like kind of that crazy guy who would like yeah. give people lawn jobs all the time and just You mean a Hoosier? Yeah, he would that's just a Hoosier he would drive thing to do. like super fast all the time. Just I, I hated being in the car with him. But if he saw a cop going the other way, he would like flip him off. Dude, your buddies I, are stupid. No, this guy, he was in my brother's grade and he would drive stupid. me home sometimes. And I'd be like, dude, get me out of the car. And like one get me out. And one time a cop turned around and like pulled us over. I don't blame and him. Scared the shit out of him. Don't ever get into a car with somebody that's trying to show off his car to you. Just so you know. I never, am always never and you so with your goddamn daughter. Don't fuck with me on that. What? Some fucking dipshit kid comes in with a nice fucking Mustang and wants to show it off how fast it is. Mustang. Oh, God, or whatever. Or a Corvette. I hear what or, you're saying. Dude. God, don't ever get into a car when somebody wants to show you Drive how fast, fast it is. You don't know what you're no. doing? No. So I'm always. Don't ever do I that. I was always the kid. Yes, officer. Of course, man. So was I. No, man. Whatever Even you need. Eureka. What do you need? Here. Yeah. You know, like you just, you don't fuck with that, dude. No. So, um, yeah, you got to respect, man. Yeah. You got to show respect. Big All time. right, so we thank Stevie Limer for joining us, man. Stevie Limer. Uh, as always, uh, the Cam and Strick podcast brought to you by First Form. Yep. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Use our link. Use it today. Get those bars. Get those energy drinks. Lots of options for you. And get the apparel. Protein. Can't beef promise stick. you. Oh, Let me show oh you. get some beef sticks out. Goddamn beef stick right here. Look at this goddamn thing. This is First Farm Sharp Cheddar Flavored. Hold on. Protein, by the way, makes you horny as shit. Kate might get it when I get home tonight. She might get it. 
because I, I already ate three of these goddamn things, so I got protein out the wazoo. I'm going to do a workout and maybe make some sweet love to my wife. Today? Mm -hmm. I'm a walking boner right now just because of this stuff. Today's President's Day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We talked about it. Well, I Remember I asked you who your favorite presidents are, and you're George like, uh, Obama? <laughs> no, I just like... No, like, he, uh, which presidents hey, do I remember? I'm just saying Obama would, like, picnic his, like, NCAA tournament picks. That's just, pretty cool. That he, makes a good president right there. He was, like, friends with, that like, makes a good president. rappers and stuff like that. Of course he is. I liked Reagan. You know who was friends with rappers? Huh. Trump. Yeah, no, he Until is, Until he became president. No, he's still friends with them. No, they don't like no, him now. No, now that they is, do. It's swinging no, back. it's swinging back. Why is that? It just is. What do you think? I don't know. He doesn't like Kanye anymore, probably, though. Kanye's gone a little bit off the deep end. He's a weirdo. Cam probably likes him. <clears throat> I don't care about him. You still have, like, a CD book in your car? No. It's all no your I, CDs. Why would I have a... Oh, I drive a <laughs> free vehicle, so I don't have a CD car now, or whatever. Do cars case. still come with CD players? No. Okay. Um, unless you live, in, uh, com unless you live way out by me, yeah. way out there. Illinois Recovery Center, 1-800- uh, seven four three zero nine seven one. Man, there's it. a bed waiting for you. Yes, there is. Message and you know, me. Yeah, you, you message me too, and I'll get you in touch with Chrissy Pondoff or Eric Conley. Mm -hmm. Hell, I'll go out there and show you it. Like, yeah, Cam went out there last week. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that a lot. I'd like to go out there actually and just no, check. Nobody's it. asking for you. What are you gonna say to him? <laughs> what do you mean? So when we stand out I there, could probably so get, no, 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 stop. Nah, because this is like where a... I think that you get stupid. You've been good all day today. You actually had a good. This is a pretty damn good interview. This or uh, uh, episode, episode, but like, what the fuck are you gonna say to him? Like, so when we're all sitting out in the yard, mm -hmm. and me and Eric Conley, who've yeah. been through hell, yeah. and and Chrissy Pondo, who's been through hell, and we're explaining what we yeah. went through, and we yeah. know exactly yeah. how the. Yeah, I, I get it. Go ahead. What are you gonna say to him? I just want to be like, how you doing, man? Everything good? Like, how's your family? Your family's okay? Hey, man, you're doing the right thing, and you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be better off for being here. How do you know? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, how do you know I'm gonna be okay? I'm just asking. Cause, dude, if you if you cause what if you listen to Eric and Chrissy, and you do what you're supposed to do, they're 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 gonna help you. Okay. They're gonna help you, man. That's fine. And you gotta trust the process. Well, did you go through it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, I'm I'm just saying. No, Why are you asking? I mean, so that's what we're gonna say back no, to him. No, no, no. no I thought we were doing no, this. No, you know what? Okay, fine. You know Come what? Come on, like, no, play the I, game. No, but I've. I'm just because that's no, but they're ev hardcore. No, but everybody has. No, they got no, questions too. Okay. Get back into the role playing. Okay, go ahead. What nope. do you mean, though? So how do you know? Because you know what? I've, I've had family members. I've had friends who have been through this, man. What'd they go through? I don't know exactly what they go you're through? going through because I've never been there. I'm going through but fentanyl. I, so yeah. what, what should I do, you think? Is it going to be okay? Listen to your sponsors here, man. Listen to your people. Okay. And they're here to help. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. I'm not chirping you. But like Andy's like, I could do things like... Sometimes like it's I not, just want to go out there and check guys, out man, check it out. They're going dude. through hell, and so like they need comfort in the same mindset. Uh, dude, to where, I can comfort. I so can how though? Because you've never been through it. Making so just know that people care. Hey, listen, there's people out there that care about you. You have kids? Yeah, and they're crying right now because they want me home. You, okay. What you, should I do about you it? Do this for them. You oh. do this for them. When you're having a hard day and you're like, I can't do. It, you think about your kids, man. I like that. Just ask him. Think about your family. Because I do people. want to take you out hey, there, but people I don't know do care about you. They do. Dude, I'm a people person. You know that. If they know hockey, no, maybe any, like anything. I don't. What I other can people? Talk to anybody. What other? What other people although do you I, hang with? Although that I messed don't up that interview Man, the other that's day. So fucking petty, dude. I can't believe it. I heard it. The very end. I'm like, ah. Uh, Kate and I just looked at each other. And I'm like, okay. Really? Yeah, but that's it. Kate wasn't like, oh my god, that was so no, uncomfortable. God, no. Not even close, dude. Of all the things she's yeah. seen with me, okay. she thinks that's fucking nuts. That was nothing. Well, continue. See, this. that's so funny. We're talking about Illinois Recovery Center and guys going through hell with fucking fentanyl, and Andy's worried about fucking up a tiny little segment on goddamn ballets. That's where the disconnect happens. No, but it's like, all listen, good, I would, I would say, listen, I am. You are. I. Your family's proud of you. I'm proud of you for being here, man. And you know wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. My family's not proud of me. They hate me. Oh. You know my what? family hates me, including my wife. What do I do about this? You worry about yourself right now. I am. That's why I'm here. You get yourself better. Well, my family hates me. Hey, no, no, no. We're not worried about them. We're worried about you. You get yourself better. I do worry and about you my got family, people. though. See I all got the, kids. See all these people here? They care kids. about you, man. That's how hard they it is. They care I'm about not, you. We're not mocking anything. I'm just letting you know. I like understand. It's, 
It's not easy for a guy that's never been through it to go down okay, there and Okay, I get it. And that's the benefit for those of you out there, honestly, is that when you go to this facility, you are dealing with people who have I been mean, there. That's why I go out okay, there. Okay, I understand. I just want to But you did a good people, job man, on that. You know? Yeah, but you don't force the I'm not the being issue. a phony. Well, because, well, you're like, I want to go out there. I'm like, do you I'm not looking to? to go out there and, like, be, like, a public speaker, but just check it out, man. See the place. Yeah, all right. You know. I, I'll, I'll go I'm through like, Chris. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> like... It can't, it's like 55 degrees, and Cam's got the scarf on today. He's chirping me. I'm just trying to help people. I know, I know you are. 800-743-0971, man. It's hardcore, people. man. It's hardcore. But they do a damn good job. Yeah, okay, I know they do. They do. Um, it's work. You got work to do. At Bellman, you get no one. Uh, Swinging dicks. Swinging dicks. God, I hate that. I used to beat up. Uh, Your husband. Hey, is that Kane Jansen? They used to call me, all the hillbillies called me Kane Jansen at the Lake of the Ozarks. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I went, like down, we go to all these fights. They call me, is that Kane Jansen? Swinging their fucking dick around, bragging about their high school days like Andy does. But they're like, I, I, I can beat Cam up. And my, your wife's like, oh, what? what's going on here? So weird. None of that at Bellman. Buick GMC on one side of the street, on the other side, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. If you need something to tow that boat, if you want something fast, you want something where the roof comes off, you want something to play with on the weekends, you want something to haul the family coming. around, dude. Springs you want coming. something that's going to get you from point A to point B with good gas mileage, dude. They've got something for everybody, yep. and everybody gets approved. Isn't that amazing? That's nice. Everyone gets approved. Check out Bellman. Bellman.com today. All right, this has been episode number 278. Good job today, Cam. Good job. That was good. We did good. We talked hockey the whole time. We had a lot of stuff to get into. Yeah, we had to get done. Great guest on the way. Love you, you guys. Enjoyed Stevie. Love, Love her, all man. you. Thanks for the support. Subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on all the YouTube, baby. Um, social media channels. We thank uh, Alex and Maddie here at yeah. Half Core Studios. Amos, Brody, Jason. Steven, Brody, Jason, our whole team, man. We wouldn't be able to do this without yeah. them. We love all you guys. Unbelievable. Uh, and um, I'm gonna go home and eat some brisket. Yeah, and some fucking. Oh, Ty's turf. in a championship game today, so wish us. You gotta go back there at two o'clock. Uh, two forty-five. I'm gonna go home and eat some brisket. I got brisket and turkey that I got from barbecue yesterday. And I'm I'm it eating the rest of it. Sounds today. old. Oh, it's fine. Two day old brisket. Two day old. Oh, huh? dude, you cook a brisket. You gotta put some mustard on that. And make a sandwich. I'll on eat. It. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, do I that. love turkey with yeah. mustard uh, on a on a oh real turkey and I'm not like. Deli slices, yeah. No, I got smoked turkey that thick. Wow. OBQs, that's oh, oh boys. Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll give them a shout out. OBQs. Yeah, OB, uh, OB Clark's OBQs. Yeah. I got a shit ton. I can't wait to go home and watch the Blues game, do my thing. Yeah. Love okay. all you guys, man. Yep. Boom, baby. Adios, everybody. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>